Welcome to my latest Horus Heresy Battle Report. This time we descend into the maelstrom of death. That is Isfan 5. I'm running 4,000 points of Raven Guard today on their desperate retreat from the murder bowl. That was the Urgul Depression. The drop site massacre. Korax landed on Isfan 5 with over 90,000 legionaries. 12,000 of them managed to get out of the pocket and only 3,000 of them left the planet when they finally escaped many months later. While nuclear fires burned overhead, Korax and his strike teams were hitting, running, falling back, trying to stay alive. And in the Battle of the Bloody Hills, seeker teams from the word bearers found them. So we're playing 4,000 points of Shatter Strike straight out of the main rulebook. Both forces are trying to break each other's lines. The word bearers trying to get inside the Raven Guard deployment zone and shatter them apart. And the only way out for the Raven Guard is to break through the word bearers lines and shatter them on the way out. The battle mat is from urbanmats.com. All the scenery that you see is from gamemat.eu up in orbit. Some container ship has broken apart and dropped some boxes down across the battle grid. But as you can see, it's fairly open. It's a blasted and ruined battle grid. It's a murder bowl. It's this fan five. Uh. And we welcome back to the channel, James from March of War. .co.uk. Say hi, James. Hi. When I How say you? you're from March of War, you are March of War. March of War. You're a simple man trying to make his way in the world, doing your hobby and bringing it to life and things. Living the dream. And thanks for all the bits and all the scenery and all the bases. I appreciate that. No worries, dude. In the background, though, you are a hobby madman. I am a madman. How many points of word bearers are you up to now? Well, this is... So, I'm, <laughs> I'm pushing towards 8,000 points. But yes. I culled a load of stuff out of my world years because they were too big. Right. So, I, I may have pulled quite a lot of my things. I pulled shoulder pads off and okay. painted them red. And Well, how many word... And the world was huge. It was ridiculous. Like, right. Yeah. So it was just too much to ever use. So, so. you're like 8,000 points of word bearers and 8,000 points of world eaters now it or might, something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Right. The, um, there's over 10k of world eaters left. So. Are you enjoying the heresy? I, I think am you loving might... the heresy. Yes. It's all why? about the heresy. Why? It's just great. It's great. Yeah, but it's why? Because it's so much fun. And it feels like it, Warhammer ought to feel. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a war game. Stuff gets pinned, stuff yep. explodes, stuff falls back. Everything explodes. Stuff goes horribly wrong for you and your opponent, yeah. and you just got to deal with it. I like the pick and chew. You can you can make much more interesting units. It, it feels like Marines used to feel nice. back in the day. You can you can make interesting characterful squads that have a story to them, why they work, and why the character that's with them does a thing. And yeah, no, it's nice. I like it. The question is, why word bearers of all <laughs> the things? Because everybody hates them. So, put our, um, our good friend, say hi, Paul, messaged me and said, "What do you think about word bearers?" I'm like, oh, well, they're they're um, they're the least frowned upon. They're, they're the most frowned upon yeah. legion. They are yeah. the. Um, I don't want to swear on camera. But yeah. Everybody hates them. And he was like, oh, I've been thinking about word bearers. I was like, you ought to do word bearers. You'd love that. And he was like, well, I was thinking you ought to do word bearers. Right. Because he's doing ultramarines. Right. So he was like. Could you just put a small force together of word bearers? He so told you to put a small force. Right. He was like, just do a small force of word bearers. It'd be fine. It'd be fun. You could have the demons. You can do it. And I was like, oh, demons. I like demons. And then, yeah, 8,000 points later. So what you're saying is say hi, Paul's fault. You've got into the hobby. You've played him a bunch of times now. He's doing the ultra marines. He's loving it. So yeah. you were like, I've got to do word bearers. And, and originally it was like half and half word bearers and demons. Yes. And I sort of went... Word bearers, word, oh, there's too many word bearers. Forget, take the demons out. Demons are their own thing now. So yes. I've also got a demons army on the way. But in this fight, it's, it's not demons. five. You haven't got full demon yet. No, no demons. But Argiltal and the Galvalbach were on his fan five. Yep. So you've got some demons. Got some, uh, part demons. Should we take a look? Let's have a look, dude. Oh, my emperor. This is 4,000 points worth of word bearers. Like in the previous one that we did at 4,000 points with Sam, we've always said that it's, it's banned for 3,000. So when we go to 4,000, you're allowed to take one more of anything. One more fast, one more heavy, one more thing. So I think you've got like one more character. One more character. Which is fine. Word bearers. Right. Their leadership is never less than six. Yeah. Which helps in close combat and things like that. Yep. And if they draw a close combat... They always count as winning it by one. Yeah. Which is probably one of the worst Legion traits yeah. out there. Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. 
That's what they do. They do have an advanced reaction though. Everyone has their one advanced reaction. And your advanced reaction is if I shoot at an entire unit, you sacrifice a dude and the shooting for fifth phase ends and that's it. Glorious martyrdom. And you've brought along the absolute G that is Argutal as your warlord. He gives you an extra reaction in the assault phase. And when you come up, bring him along as your unit, the Galval back that he's with get a five up invulnerable save and score. Yeah. So these guys have got a five up invulnerable save, a five up feel no pain. Argutal is an absolute G. They've got like three wounds, toughness five. I think he's got five wounds, toughness five. He's a lot of points and he should be. It's a very scary unit. We'd like to talk us through what else you've got. Okay, panning along, we've yes. got 20 tactical marines. Yes. Um, they have got the dark channeling upgrade, okay. which makes them into the corrupted unit subtype. Right. Which basically means they cause fear, one, and they cannot fail morale. When they fail morale, they basically take D3 mortal wounds, which you can't use your apothecary to ignore. Okay. Um, and they just stay there. They just stay there. Just stay. They just keep them coming. They're yep. praying to the dark gods. Who's the guy with so all the laser beams? The character that's attached to them is my centurion, who is an esoterist. Right. Basically a librarian, dark librarian. Um, he's got biomancy, so that gives him a buffing spell and a shooty spell. Yes. Um, and there's a apothecary in that unit as well. You've got an apothecary back here in this unit over here. Yes. Uh, the apothecary pack... That's a pack that you sell. Yeah, that's in my veteran upgrade bits. Veteran upgrade bits, because I've got about 50 of these things for my <laughs> iron hands or the veteran upgrade stuff. Okay, and biomancy, basically, instead of shooting, you could increase the strength and toughness of something if yes, you pass so a leadership set. Yeah. Or of any unit within any six. Because you're telling me like you can do it on Lorgar a couple of times over. Yeah. Uh, there's ways to buff up stuff to make them like, oh, you can get this unit up to strength six, toughness six. Yes. If they end up within six yeah, of, your, exactly. of your biomancy dude. So biomancy running around with 10 tactical marines. Yeah. Over here we have 10 despoilers. 10 despoilers. What's with, in this one? With the Diabolus. So right. another, another apothecary with them. You're just moving. But then there's the Diabolus. So the Diabolus, the Diabolus is a Centurion upgrade and it's the word bearer specific one. Right. And it's sort of like a slightly lesser Psyker. He's just a bit of a, a dabbler. Um, but what he does is on the charge he can do a, a strength and toughness buff to the unit that he's with. Okay, so one does it in the shooting phase, he does it in the charge phase, yep. increase strength and toughness, and put it on a choppy unit of troops. So he score. can only do it really on the unit he's attached to. Nice, so, yeah. and you've got an apothecary in there. Uh, these guys got they're dark channeling as well, as well. Yeah, so they're, they're corrupted, channeled. so they're essentially fearless. If you fail a leadership test, you're losing D3 wounds. Yeah. Okay, guys in then the middle. In the middle, we've got the Praetor um, and his command squad. He's got a Tartarus command squad. Okay. Uh, the Praetor has got the Burning Law upgrade. Right. So that basically makes him into a Psyker as well. Okay. And for ease and simplicity, he's got Biomancy as well. So one minute. Biomancy, Biomancy, Diabolist. Yeah. So shooting phase, shooting phase, increase strength and toughness. Yep. Charge phase, increase shooting strength and yep. toughness. And this is a command score with a banner, so yep. they score. They do indeed. Nice. What weapons have you given them? They've got power moles. Okay. And bolt oh. Yeah, double bolters. Um, okay. I keep calling them storm bolters. Combi, uh, bolters. combi bolters. Yeah. Okay. I just think combi bolter is the one that's got a plasma or a melt or a thing. I know. Yeah. Well, they are. You get com. Yeah. yeah they're magna minor combi bolters. Yeah. Minor combi <laughs> bolters. Magna combi bolters. They had all the guns all and all the, the toys. They, they had all the things back there in the time of the heresy. Uh, who are these over, over here? On the end, we've got the ashen circle. Okay. Which are the word bearer specific um, jumpy units. Basically, they've got the six. There's, they're normally a unit of five. I've added one more for points. Uh, the sergeant in the squad gets a little melter pistol. Six inch melter pistol. Six inch melter pistol. Uh, the rest of them have got flamers. They okay. Jump packs. They do double hammer or wrath on the way in. And then they've got ray caxes, which are. Uh, AP3 shred? Yeah. I think that they are. That's about right. Yeah. So, I mean, they're only one wound dudes. Yeah, they're not. Anything but dynamic. with all the flamers, they're pretty shooty. With all the axes, they're pretty choppy. And they're, they're not stupid points. They're, they're all right. I mean, you've they're like 120 points for five. Of them, what we've so. tried to do, I mean, you've added them along because we're trying to build a list that would look like the list, narratively speaking, on his fan five. Exactly. That's why you haven't got very many demons along. That's yeah. why you only got one of the nasty dreadnoughts Marvel along. Dreadnought. That's why you've got a lot of psychers along yeah. and they're all singing and they're all him and they're all chanting away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, really big guns. 
So, in front of the really big guns, we've yep. got the recon squad first with the really big sniper rifles. Okay. Because I have I have a real problem with the re, the recon sniper rifle, the Nemesis one, because the Nemesis Bolter doesn't look like a gun that's got a 72-inch range. Right. But a, um, a great big, I don't know, they're not even 50 cal, are they? They'd be like 100 cal. <laughs> yeah. Um, sniper rifles. That looks like a gun with a 72-inch range that would kill you. Brilliant. So, so that's recon squad. The just, guns are bigger than them. Yeah, massive. Who are these guys? That's two squads of seekers. Oh, they're the ones that found the Raven Guard. Yes, these are the ones that were seeking you. My okay. seeker kill squads. Uh, two squads, both of them with the Kraken bolters. Right. Which are, you get like three weapon profiles for them. One that does loads of shots yeah. and strength three. One that does a few shots and strength five. And yeah. one that does something else something oh, else third one yep okay so they're cool they infiltrate they scout they do that sort of stuff okay and moving around and looking for people yes they have a thing where at the beginning of the game we nominate a unit to be their like their quarry their target and they get to re-roll wounds against that unit brilliant so that's cool or re-roll wounds one maybe okay yeah lots of flavor in the word bearers isn't there they, I mean, they're bad guys, and everyone hates them, but they're good bad guys in a Darth Vader kind of way. Yeah, you've got to love to hate them, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a Kratos with all the Volkite. All the Volkite. There's two ways to build the Kratos as his people. One is with all the Las Cannons and the Melter Gun, and one is with all the Volkite. This thing chucks out a lot of Volkite and infantry killing. A Scorpius, Scorpii. Yep. Yeah. For all the things. A Rhino with a Multi Melter. Yep, yeah, with 10 tacticals. 10 tacticals. Not made dark channelized no no is that a vexilla then that is a vexilla uh, no that's the sergeant still no that's the sergeant, that's the sergeant still. still so that's fine um over here what's these guys they are a tactical support squad okay um with all the shenanigans all the upgrades we've got the um warp fire no so these are our special plasmas so right. they're warp, warp fire plasmas so they're assault to non-getting hot uh 24 inch range plasmas are they yeah. Nice. And there's an apothecary, and there's with, an apothecary them as well. with them as well. So another apothecary. You've spent apothecary. on the apothecaries today. Right. We have a Dreadnought Talon with plasma and one with conversion beamers. Yeah. So the plasma one, again, is the warp fire plasmas. They're the upgraded forge. Eh, I don't mean forge well. I mean. The upgraded word bearer. Word bearer type. one. That's the word. Okay. Yeah. Um, which isn't as good as the little ones. I think the little ones are better, but that's fine. I wanted it because it made sense. Yes. And then the double conversion beamer. Double conversion beamers, which you don't see very often, but conversion beamers do nasty blinding, particularly when you've got improvisers. I've got improvisers. The word bearers know this. They've brought along the They've toys. The toys, yeah. And then the Marigal. Yeah. I forget the name of the dude, but the nasty... The nastiest dreadnought in the game. It's got an extra initiative, an extra weapon skill. However... He's so corrupted, he's fuming so many dark energies that if your guys are within six inches of him, yep. um, you so lose your toughness, your no, corrupted so any of my guys. demons corrupted or any of that sort of stuff, or psychers. So all the guys with the big banners, yep. the Margotal, any yeah, psychers, don't want to be anywhere near him. Yeah. I think they army. lose one strength and toughness. It's, yeah. Like, yeah, it's quite negative. Le <laughs> I think your leadership drops to six as well. Yeah. You don't want him anywhere near you. No. So a heavy infantry force of word bearers being led by Argyll, Tal and the Galval back, which will be chomping their way forward with the Marigold Dreadnought chomping his way forward as well, supported by some uh, specialist gunfire from the support team, from the sniper teams, with psychers buffing your units left, right and all over the place. All over it the looks crazy <laughs> and it looks very beautiful. Well Thank done. You. Cheers. When did you start this Word Bearers project? When we ran March of Winters, okay. I'd literally spoke to Paul like three days before, okay. and I was sat gluing them together the night before March of Winters at Element. We were just chilling and chatting and gluing these guys together and ch chopping shoulder pads off. And So in three or four months, you've put together and painted 8,000 points of Word end Bearers. Of October, so it's like two, two or three months. months. Yeah. Ava, you are a hobby genius, sir. Uh, I doff my cat to you. I did spend Not six my hours. Cat. Okay, I doff my doff cat. cat. I did spend six hours painting on Christmas Day, which was like, what? Yeah, having spent all before Christmas painting other people's stuff, I then spent six hours on Christmas Day painting my own toys. Dude, I, I paint on Christmas Day as well. Yeah! The mark of a true hobby genius. Did you paint on Christmas Day? <laughs> Are your kids all grown up and things? Let us know in the comment section below. You also do commission work, commission painting work. Yeah. All these bases are from you. Yeah. All the lovely stuff and things, as well as all the... Yeah, it's lovely. Let's have a look at the Raven Guard. Like um, my lovely Raven Guard bases are from marchofwar.co.uk. Right. 
This is three nine 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 points of Raven Guard. Thirty nine thousand nine hundred yeah. ninety nine. Yeah, you haven't gone up against Raven Guard before. I haven't. So you know you've got your special thing, which is you're never less than leadership six and da da da. Yeah, yeah. One thing. Raven Guard don't have that. Right. Raven Guard have three things, depending on if whether you're hawks, falcons, or talents. Of course they do. It represents their way of war. The way the the thing to remember is the fast stuff, if it goes really fast, like flat out and runs, we get shrouding. The infantry, which is not heavy or terminator plate, which will be all the snipers, all the troops. So they all get infiltrated and shrouded. Nice. And everything that's not one of those two things. So the Dreadnoughts and the Elites and stuff, they get to re-roll ones to wound in the first round of combat after charging or charged. Nice. So that's what we do. And our advanced reaction is once per battle when you shoot me, I can move and get a four up shrouding until the end of that turn. And if that movement brings me out of line of sight from your shots, then you've wasted your shots. That's nice. And of course, coming with me today, because it's this fan five, is a Primark. Yes, I've got a Primark and you haven't got a Primark, but we did discuss this before when we were setting this up. I feel like 10 Galvor back in our gold tile. Um, put it this way, I don't want to put Korax into 10 Galvor back in our gold tile. Five Galvor back in our gold tile? Maybe. Maybe. It'd be close. <laughs> but 10 of them, no. <laughs> when you add a Primark, it changes the shape of your army somewhat because Raven Guard. We excel in the deployment phase. So I've got so much infiltrate, which also grants outflank. Yep. And I've got deep strike abilities and outflank abilities over there. And Korax also gives my entire army scout. So after deployment, before, even when we know who's going first, before seizing the initiative, everything on foot can move six inches and all the skimmers and all the vehicles can move 12 inches. Not nice. more within nine, not within nine inches of your stuff. But I did tell you like... um. You can't charge if you yeah, scout. Yeah. I'd not clicked that before. So, for example, if during deployment I've scouted up and you're going first, you move down towards me and shoot these guys, even in my first turn after you've moved and got close to them, because it's first turn, I can't suddenly move up and charge, charge. you. Yeah. They're not ready. They're not set yet. Yeah. So it doesn't. it's not entirely broken and doesn't set up first turn charges. So I really have to consider, if I go first or second, what units I want to scout, what units I don't want to scout, depending on what stuff I might want to jump on you. Typically, we type, like to jump on stuff in turns two or three because this isn't a right of war either. I've got three fast attack choices, two units of the javelins with the lads and the melters and a unit of bikes, uh, all with multi melters. And I've given that unit of bikes improvisers. Improvisers means the sergeant hits on twos and I ignore night fighting. And because I ignore night fighting, you can't shroud against it. The improviser also means that if they get hit by a blinding weapon, such as your conversion beamers, I'm always blinded unless I roll a one. Right. Korax can't be blinded. He's a primer. But they've got improvisers, so you can't shroud those multi-melter shots. That's the fast shot. I've got three heavies. We've got two heavy support squads, one with all the Volkite, one with all the auto cannons. So no 10 last cannons here. We've got auto cannons and Volkite. The Volkite can be quite nasty, though, and both of these squads have got improvisers as well. And then the third heavy sh slot is the Derrideo Dreadnought with a plasma cannonade. Alos missile launcher and the twin heavy bolters. It's got a free interceptor reaction if you're deep striking in anywhere. And the Alos can hit things it can't see, but it's only three shots. It's six AP three pinning. It can hit stuff it can't see. So those are my three heavies with improvisers. And then we've got four elites. We've got two separate dreadnoughts, one with all the lads, one with all the melter. We've got a unit of Tartarus Terminators. All the red claws in my army that you see our Raven's Talons, they are special Lightning Claws. It's normally 10 points for two Lightning Claws. My two Lightning Claws for every model cost 20 points. So I've got 120 points of Lightning Claws in there. But they're better Lightning Claws. They rend on fives instead of rending on sixes. Nice. And there's two Hammers in that squad as well. And then finishing off the Elite Squad is this unit down here, which are a Mordathan Strike Team. The Mordathan... So Korax was one of the last Primarchs to actually join the Great Crusade. Only 70 years before the heresy was he reunited with the Emperor and all the dudes. And 
the more Dathan were some of the very young and some of the very youth that helped him overthrow in the Civil War for deliverance. Those people that broke the planet and broke them out of their prison world. And when the Emperor came along, the more Dathan were some of the first to become space marines. So the, and these are the surviving youths from 70 years ago right. that are now space marines. So they've got two wounds. They've got a ballistic skill of five. They've only got a weapon skill of four, but they have got extra attacks. There is melter bombs in that unit. There is uh, three power weapons in that unit. And once per battle, they've got their fatal strike ability. So all their shotguns can have a rending of four up. Nice. They also get infiltrate and all the things. They've got all the things that all the normal troops have. Uh, they're a shooty elite unit. I like them. And they all have names. And he knows them personally. Uh, so that's my four elites. I didn't bring a Praetor along with me. It's just Korax. The Praetors are out there supporting other war bands and hit and run stuff left and right and trying to distract the world eaters. So all he's got with him is a chaplain with a chump, 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 uh, chump a couple of <laughs> Raven's Talons, which are going to join the Terminators. Oh, I also gave a dedicated transport for the Mordathan. Um, we've only got one rhino chugging around left. That's all that's left. Dozer Blade, Morty Melter, they're going to be jumping in there. And then my scoring are all along the front. I've got five scoring. I think you've got six. Because the way the Shatter Strike works is I've got to break through into your lines, your deployment zone. Every scoring thing that gets in your enemy deployment zone is worth two points. Everything else that gets in there that can score is worth one point. Harbing is the Legion, for example. They can't score or deny. Vehicles can't score or deny. But everything else, like Dreadnoughts or, or Terminators, they'll count as one point. I'm trying to break through you. You're trying to smash me. Two units of Tactical Marines. This is the only artificer in my entire army on the sergeants here. I'd yep. like to keep them alive with Raven Talons. And this unit's got an Aubrey Scanner. And then over here, three units of Recon Snipers. One unit of ten. Two units of five. They've all been given improvisers on the sergeants as well. But no artificer army. You can't bring it on Recon Squads, which makes sense to me. Because they're light, they have skirmish, things like that. So a heavy infantry force, lots of guns. I've got lots of guns trying to slow the word bearers down while we get sneaky and infiltrate around the outside and try and break through and get out of here. We don't want to be massacred in the bloody hills. And Korax surely will lead the loyalists to victory. And here we are after infiltrate and scout moves. Korax believes he has the initiative here, unless you steal from me. Unless I sneeze. So let's talk about what you've got. This is a massive despoiler squad yep. next to my outflanking marker. I want to come on here. I've got two units of tactical marines on foot that are skirting around the outside. They're literally getting ready to walk into Mother Sloyman. So they can't be there. No. Nope. So to do something about that... I scouted this unit of auto cannon guys. There's a gap under there. They can shoot through. And I've got some snipers. And there's also a big nasty Kratos. So we've scouted the bikes forward because yep. then they're going to move another 16. Yep. We're going to be in multi multi range. And there was this thing was shrouded by electromagnetic interference. Inside that rhino is my 10 more Dathan with yep. their fatal strike shotguns. The plan is. It's going to move, and they're going to shotgun your Margul Thal Dreadnought, and we don't have to worry about any of its rules. It's dead. <laughs> no. Do you like that? No, we're not yeah. having that. I refuse. Uh, if I fail, they're dead. And even if I win, they are probably dead, because you've got all of these here, and then there's a rhino with your 10 specialist plasma guys. Yeah. It's basically plasma that is one less strength, but doesn't get hot. Yeah. Apart from that, all the rules are the same. Pretty well. So strength six to strength seven, that's nothing. Yeah. It's still wounding Marines on twos all the time for not getting hot. I like it. It's yeah. very Tau of you. It's two as well. So it's it's Tau. Nice. Yeah. It's so, very Tau. So we can confirm in the narrative that the word bearers went oh, to the Tau and went, can we have a bit while of they were in the caves, so drawing on the, the walls. So you've got warp fire, warp, yes. memory, warp tech. That explains a lot. The Tau, does, the Tau were influenced by the word bearers 10,000 years ago. So we zoom through to there. I have uh, scouted a bit with Korax and his unit. We've got infiltrators up here. You've got your seeker squads, which have found them here yeah. and here. Uh, I've got some snipers over here, moved the dreadnoughts around. Basically, I was able to move everything around to get shots into the things that I want to get shots in. Like I'd really like to stun at least the Scorpius in turn one. 
with this, the Lance Cannons from the Javelins over here. The interesting thing about this terrain is there is no ruins. So the most, the highest cover save anyone's going to get is a six. Yeah. Unless you have skirmish. Seekers have skirmish. Recons have skirmish. They're going to get cover saves of five up. But apart from that, Everybody else is it's going to be a brutal game. It's going to be horrendous. I know I shouldn't have perhaps uh, clustered up as much as I have. Because you do have blast with the Scorpius, you do have blast with the plasma cannons, you do have blast with your conversion beamers. Yeah. Uh, but sod it. So, so Paul made an interesting call on this one the other yes. day, and it's like it's all right spreading your stuff out so that you don't get as many when you hit. Yeah. But if you clump them all up, if it scatters, you might miss completely. Exactly. So you you give and take a little bit of both. You yeah, yeah. Which if way it's, it's a hit, go. it's nasty. If it scatters, you might not hit any at all. Exactly. And that's the plan. You've got your command squad front and center. And standing next to the command squad is Argotal, your warlord, yeah. and ten Galvalbacks, which can go right, left. They can do what they want. Go where they want to go. Have you you put a couple of infiltrators down? Have you got anything in reserve? I've got nothing in reserve. Nothing got in reserve. Vehicles, that's it. Okay. Um, here's the Ashen Circle. Yep. That's the tactical squad. We're deployed. We're deployed for this battle in the bloody hills of Isfam Five. The Raven Guard have been caught out by the word bearers, but we've moved round, we've got the initiative, we're moving in, we've got to break through the lines. But have they been double caught out by the word bearers? Do you want to try and steal I from me? To steal. It's I illegal. Love. It's not. Stealing's illegal. Do not roll a six. You sure? We're we doing it here. Oh. oh. Don't you have the thing where I have to roll it again if I see is. Uh so no, there That's is there. there's a there's a recon right of war, which I've actually built some of the Raven Guard around as well, which you can re-roll the dice to see who goes first, and you can re-roll the dice to seize the initiative. That'd be so annoying if you got that six and then you got to re-roll it. Yeah, and then White Scars, there's a right of war that they... There's a thing that they have, which is plus one to the roll. All right, cool, so that's nice. So White Scars get plus one to the roll, and then if they pick that right of war... They're going first on, yeah. Yeah, They're that's cool. cool. White Scar's going nice. first all the time. But right. as, as anyway. it stands, sorry, <laughs> I have a Primark. So yeah, we Primark. saw you coming. And it's Raven Guard, turn one. At the end of the Raven Guard movement phase, it's all still down here. But my outflank assault is on this side. And so Korax re uh, launches his assault round this way opportunities to move for the word bearers in the movement phase but where would you go you're either so close it makes no difference or so far away i go the wrong way so, yeah yeah right at the back of the battle grid so we're here we're going to launch an assault but before we get down to this we're going to shoot, shoot some shots on the other side okay because i want to draw out your shooting phase reaction <laughs> <laughs> We're going to shoot four last cans across the battle grid and try and stun that Scorpius. Okie dokie. And you're letting it go. Threes to hit, only two hit. Strength nine against the side armor of that, which is 12, with Sunder. And that's only one penetrating hit, which you do get a six up cover save against, my friend. Ooh. And nope. you don't make it. So at least I'm going to shake it. And instead, that is plus one to that because it's a last cannon. So that's immobilized. Yeah. That's the worst result I wanted. Yeah. It's stuck in that direction and it will still be free to yeah. fire. Okay, I'm going to fire my snipers down at your sne se sneakers. Sneakers. Sneakers, they're a bit too close here. Twos on the sergeant, yeah. threes on everyone else. These are nemesis bolters which wound on threes and that's just a wound. You get a three up save against that. Which you fail, so you now you have to take a pinning test because <laughs> you got hit by sniper fire. Why am I rolling two dice? And they're not pinned because you roll two dice I'm for the other ship. Don't test. worry, I'm you roll. Right. We're good. You're fine. Good. You're good. You, one guy dies though. Yes, one, one guy dies. <laughs> and you're choosing to return fire here. Return fire. Not shroud anywhere else or anything like that. No. Because of improvisers and things. Or? Yeah, and like I might actually manage to kill some snipers. Okay, here. Right. maybe three maybe. shots. Hitting on threes. You hit three times. These are strength five. You're doing the breaching shots from the so, Nemesis rounds. Yeah, these guys have... Something? Four up. Um, precision. Okay. So we didn't the, get any precision. No precisions. <laughs> no Threes precisions. to wound. Fours breach. And... Yeah, what? <laughs> three up save. No. You don't do anything. No. So I've drawn out the reaction. So we're moving down the line. This Dreadnought with its four Laz cannons. I moved it round 
So we can see that Rhino, I want to crack it open and then shoot all the Volkite team at it. Uh, four shots with the Laz Cannon hits on twos and that's three hits. I need twos to glance the front of the Rhino with Sunder. That is three penetrating hits. There is intervening models between me and you. So you do get three six up saves and you make two of them. So it might not be dead unless I roll a six. I don't roll a six. Instead, I shake it and shake it. It can move, but it's only snap firing. Yep. So I've got 50 dice with the Volkite. Yep. And I'm looking at the Galvor back. I'm thinking I might as well start on them. Volume of fire. Volume of, they have a three up save, right? Yeah. Uh, and they also have a five up feel no pain. But let's, let's, while I, mm, or I could just shoot at this infantry squad and really hurt it. But they've got a feel no pain as well. The difference is I'm wounding them on threes and wounding them on twos. Uh, let's shoot the Galvor back. Twos to hit with the Sarge. Threes to hit with everyone else. Threes to wound. I hope for more. But I, I, I was worried there was going to be more. Yeah. Three ups. Saves. That looks like Ooh, loads of ones. That wasn't twos. great. And then a five up feel no pain. Yeah. And they have three wounds each. They do. So I might kill one. If I kill one, I'm pleased. So if these I kill are two, five ups. bonus. Uh, I kill two. I kill two. You kill two. I kill two. So instead of ten of them there, there's eight of them there. But well, then deflagrate. Oh yes, deflagrate. Threes. Do I kill another one? Three up. Threes. Oh what? No. And then feel no pain. No. I kill two and burn one down to one wound remaining. Okay, so that was better than I could hope for. Now we're going on to the Deradeo Dreadnought. Yep. You've got snipers up here. Yep. I don't want you pinning my stuff. Okay. I'm going to kill the snipers. Okay. So I'm not going to do the blast one. I'm going to do a straight shot with the plasma cannonade. These hit on twos. And they're going to wound on twos but breach on a four. Um, so that's two saves. That's two five up cover saves because okay. they're snipers. So two regular saves first. Make okay. one, take one. And then the cover saves. Brilliant. Okay, one dead so far. Then the ALOS missile launcher comes in, hits twice, wounds twice. Uh, those are AP3, so you need two cover saves. And you make one of them as well, so only two die. And then that's a pinning test as well. Yeah. At leadership eight. And I don't pin your snipers. And then the twin linked heavy bolter fires in, hitting on threes, wounding on threes, and you have four more three up saves. Lots of firepower from the Deradeo, but in the end, only killing two of the snipers. At least it will force a leadership test. So let's shoot more snipers at them. I really don't want your sniper. One dead. Sniper on sniper action. Twos on the Sarge. Threes on the other guys. Uh, these are wound on threes, fives rend. So two saves and one breaching. I'll put that one on your sergeant if you don't mind. Yeah, no worries. Uh, uh, so so those are three up saves. Three up saves. One dies, dies, and the sergeant. And the sergeant on a five up in front. He's fine. Yeah. And they take a pinning test again because they've just been hit by a pinning weapon. And this they time they're be binned. Pinned. So far, not stopped the Scorpius, not stopped the Rhinos, but I have stopped the sniper team for a turn. Yeah. And injured a bit of Galvo back. Let's come all the way down here to this conga line of auto cannon wielding nutters. Yep. That are lining up your unit that can't firm or owl fall off the table that are guarding my outflank point. Yep. And the sergeant hits on twos, drop dice, don't count. The rest hit on threes. It suddenly occurred to me that I should have shot sniper fire first because um, snipers could snipe out the apothecary that you have in there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Two's to wound with auto cannons. Six is rend, however. So these are armor saves of three up, and then you have a cover one of okay. five up, and then a bunch of feel no pain. Oh, six up on the cover, right? And then that a bunch of feel no pain. Yeah. Our pains. And this time five get cut down. We are poorly coordinated because we're going to fire the snipers in, which we really should have shot him first. Twos on the sergeant, threes on everyone else. These nemesis bolters will wound on threes and fives rend. And they're on your apothecary. Yeah. And he's not getting any cover no. from this straight shot. So he needs Brilliant. two feel no pains. On himself. And he's still alive on one wound remaining. So that on your apothecary, please. <laughs> We'll keep going on your property till he's dead. <laughs> and that one. 
Three up, three up saves and five up for no pains on your both three. Fair five up for no pain. Oh, sorry, it's that one. Yeah, yeah. He's alive on one and wound. And again. Three up. Precision oh. fire sniper. That's, oh, that's uh, a fail. Okay. Die sniper. Die. He's, dead. He's dead. And then that one, anyone. That Ooh. fails. So uh, you could still one. get the feel no pain because he would have it still been alive action. at the time. Nope. So nope. kill two and take out the apothecary, which I should have done the first time round. Um, then they take a pinning test. No, they automatically pass leadership. What's the corrupted thing? Yeah, so we need to check if that works for pinning. Right, comment below. Uh, a unit with the corrupted subtype, um, if it fails a morale check, it doesn't fall back, suffers D3 wounds. If it fails a morale check, pinning. Units that suffer pinning must take a leadership test once it's finished. And if it fails, it's pinned. Yeah. So as far as we can tell, this is leadership. This is your sergeant screaming out some stuff, yeah. whether you get pinned or not. not this is morale, morale yeah. whether you're broken. So you do have a sergeant in that squad at and leadership eight. Also the um, diabolist in okay, that Okay, leadership nine. Here we go. And they're yeah. not pinned. But we feel like you could be pinned, but yeah. not break. Not break, Is yeah. what they're saying. I think that's what it says. Okay. So we did that. We're on to these guys. Now, I've got the last cannons to come this way. Have you put a flare shield on your Kratos? Of course I have. Damn it. Okay, maybe not go that way. We've got the last cannons, which have lined up into Rhino. I'd love to shoot past Rhino into Scorpius, but there's a lot of line of sight blocking in the way, and I can't shoot the Scorpius. So we're going to shoot uh, the Rhino with your veterans inside. No, your leading tactical support squad inside. Support squad. We're going to hit them on threes, and that's a good array of hitting. And we're looking for anything that's a three or more. And those are four penetrating hits. You've got four cover saves. Six. Up. I can't see any of the side armor, so it's all five up. And you make two of them. The way it works is I'm actually... Hitting side, yeah. but I can only see a bit of the front, right. so you get five yeah, up cover yeah. save against that. So two come through, looking for sixes. No sixes. Again, that one is just shaken, just like the other one. It can move, but it'll only be snap firing. Yeah. So, so far, James, from much of what I could okay, all the shots into your vehicles haven't done anything They've to your not vehicles. They've great, have they? Which is good. It's Do you know why it's good? Because you get to shoot more at them. Well, it means that I've got all the bad dice rolls out of the way. So yeah. now all the multi-melter hits that are hitting the Kratos will definitely kill it. Totally going to work. Starting off with a 70-point Rhino versus a 400-point Kratos with a multi-melter in multi-melter range. Are you ready? It's going to be fine. It'll be embarrassing. Yeah, this is costs a fifth of your thing. It's twin linked. <laughs> Which is lucky. I hit. It's 2d6. Yeah. I need an 8 to pen. 7 plus 8. No, I need a 7 to pen because of flare shield. And that is a penetrating hit. Yeah. 9 plus the 7 is math. Many. A 5 will kill your Kratos. Don't do And it that. died to a rhino. Don't do that. No, I want to do it. I know you do. I didn't do it do to you a rhino. Do you know what's funny, though, what? is if it blows up and kills all your more Nathan. <laughs> Maybe I should have shot the more Nathan first. <laughs> a 5. And it's a four. Instead, it's just immobilized. Okay, so there's four bikes. Well, all the bikes are in range, but yep. the ones over here can't hurt it because flare shield is a yep. thing. So there's the four that are in range that can hurt it. You are getting cover. We're hitting on threes. We're twin linked because there's three ones. Everything hits. Okay, this is armor bane range. My strength is seven, not eight because of flare shield. So seven to glance, eight to pen. First one. Glances. Second one. Pens. Third one. Yeah. Pens. Last one. Glances. Two glances, two pens. Two cover saves, two cover saves. So two six up on the glance. Two six up on the pen. Got one. So three whole points in total. Does it blow up on a five or six? No. Come on now. I've got to kill a vehicle in turn one. No. It's a six. No. It's a dead Kratos. Oh. It blows up two inches. <sighs> we'll work out how much damage it does off camera. <laughs> Ding dong. The big tank is gone. I can't believe I you killed it. Killed one of your guys in the explosion. You killed one of the more Dathan in the explosion. And I learned that Marigold Dreadnoughts have eight wounds. <laughs> eight wounds. Which is more than a Leviathan. So now I'm slightly hesitant about this fatal strike that I'm going to do. 
from the more data. There's such a lovely gap here. Now. And you know what? If I fail this by one wound because one died in the explosion, I'm I'm going to be very sad. You're going to be really upset. More days and shotguns with fatal strike. Hitting on twos. We lay in wait for this. We planned this. This rends on a four. And that's oh. not good. Oh, it's just the right amount. Yeah. You've got to fail every single five up and then we'll save. I nearly do. <laughs> and it's still on two wounds remaining. So my dreadnought can see the Marigold dreadnought. Yep. So let's try and kill it. Gravis Melter hits both of the times. Threes to wound it. Wounds both of the times. Two more. Five up in vulnerable saves. Please die, Dreadnought. It's too nasty to live. It's gone as well. I've Come killed on, two things. It will blow up. Four inches and hit more stuff. I think it does distance plus a thing. Does it? it does it blow up even bigger. further? It's so corrupted and filthy. What did we learn, James? We learned that they explode D6 plus six inches. So that's a 10 inch explosion. 10 inch explosion. So we did the thing on your dread and your dread not injured. Explosions hit your guys. Yeah, got you six made the saves. Talent. Now you, we're gonna hurt me. And then the rhino could be dead as well on one wound remaining. But nine more Dathan get hit on twos. Brilliant. And I need a bunch of two up saves. And these are two wound heroes. And I lose four of them in the explosion. He's already killed a lot and he hasn't even done anything. He's not even moved. You hit three of the bikes and three of them are injured. Right, three up saves. Okay, the bikes right. are good. You hit my rhino with a strength eight explosion. And that penetrates here. <laughs> and immobilizes the rhino right there. <laughs> That's all right. Then I hit your rhino, rhino with a strength eight one. explosion. And it just bounces. And with that spectacular explosion, that's the end of the Raven Guard's turn one. I mean, our fatal strike worked. We got rid of the thing that we wanted to get rid of, but only half of the unit are standing. Yep. And they haven't even shot us yet. And we got rid of the big, the nasty Kratos. At the end of all of that, I've got to take a leadership test on my Mordathan. And they managed to hold. You've got to take a leadership uh, test on... Do they? Because I cause fear. You cause fear. Yes. They're leadership nine. You've got fear so one. Right, so fear we're okay. One. Um, you take a morale test here and if you fail which you don't you would have lost D3 guys and I think that's it for morale oh no you've got a sniper yeah, team sniper up team there as well yeah which and is missing a sergeant so that's their leadership 7 yeah. and they hold as well so the word bearers well it's like you strap bombs to your dreadnought you saw <laughs> yes you saw into the future you saw the fatal strike of the raven guard and when there was a boom there was a big bada boom as we go on to word bearers, turn one. 500 miles from the drop site massacre, the battle for the Bloody Hills has begun. Of course, Corax and the Raven Guard had the first strike, but now the word bearers move forward and prepare to attack back again. Chorus grants two reactions in the movement phase, so there was some movement around here, but we're going to start the shooting phase all the way down here with your seekers firing up at my snipers. Snipers. Hitting on threes. threes. Precision fire hits the sergeant. Can so it wound him? Wounding the sergeant. Doesn't. Oh. And the other one does at strength five. And I make the save. Yeah. More sniper fire fired out over here and missed the target. Now we're coming on to the tactical squad. There are 16 in range. They can fire at my Volkite team. I'm not reacting. You're hitting on threes. I'm wounding on fours. With a three up save, I only lose a dude. Then the shaken rhino snap fired in, no damage caused. The flamers from the Ashen Circle are out of, out of range. So this flank of the battlefield is done for now. There was some advancing with the Galvor back, but we do have a Seeker squad here, which are firing into Korax and the Terminators. And I thought about doing my once per battle thing, but there's still quite a lot of shots that can come out and hit some things that I really don't want to get hit. Yeah. So I'm not going to do it. You're doing the breaching shot one more time, which hits yep. on threes. And wounds on threes yeah. and fours breach, and so that's only two hits. So two hits and then two, one, wound. one wound, but it's also breaching. So, so yeah. it's a five up and vulnerable save, and basically you can place that where you want. You can put it on the side with a hammer, that's what I would do. Yeah, I think so. Next up, firing the dual conversion beamer down into my bikes. Now, at this range of strength nine, AP4, it'll double me out. Uh, I'd like to return far, but only a couple can see. Right. 
If I shroud, then I can't return fire at this nasty plasma squad, which will absolutely melt them. Yeah. But if I don't shroud and you blind me, I'm in trouble. You can't return fire anyway. Yeah. So I guess I'm going to have to take it. Shroud. Let's see so if you manage to scattered. hit. Ballistic skill five. The first one scatters four inches and that shot misses. The second one hits and that will hit three of the guys and wound them on twos. And three of them are wounded. Three. Three up saves. I lose a dude. I have to take a blinding test because it's a blinding weapon and I want to roll a one, otherwise I'm snap firing. You've got your visors, haven't you? Oh! I roll a one. Nice. Korax nearby, shouting at them, see? I lost the biker, but he told them to turn off all their improvisers and scanning equipment. Yeah, so nailed it. It didn't go dark. We're still very combat effective and you've still got lots of plasma to shoot here. Your Scorpius... And there's a big squad with pistols. There is. So now you're firing the Scorpius up and over, trying to land it here to hit both the gut snipers and the auto cannon teams. Turn out you can't see them, so this will scatter full distance. And it does scatter eight inches, but at that angle, it still looks good. The shot still hits four in the auto cannon team, which wounds them on twos. Fours rend. So I get a save on that one. Uh, three of them die because the blast I'm not in cover yep. and rocket barrage they take a pinning test as rockets rain from the sky and they're not pinned then we move back across to this tactical squad that got lit up last turn now you had moved them round to pistol and charge the bikers but I've already reacted back with the bikers plus you killed the closest guy yep. so now they're changing their targets to light up the more day than there's two hand flamers in that squad that can hit through and get this unit, plus all the pistols. Pulling out pistols, because then you're still eligible to charge. If you yep. rapid fired, you couldn't. Hand flamers also hit and wound on fives. That's pretty good. The pistols hit on threes. And wound on fours. And a plasma pistol on the Sarge misses, gets hot, hot, armor save. And he's okay. Right, this number of wounds came through. Um, I have three up saves. They have two wounds each. You kill one and injure one. There's four more Dathan left. And now finally, the tactical squad, support squad, open up. And you decided to put all the plasma into the dreadnought. Yep. So I might as well return fire. Excellent. So here are the plasma shots on threes. Warp fire. Plasma. Warp fire. <laughs> yeah, not plasma. Warp fire blaster. Wounding on fives, but they'll breach. Is that only three? That is only three. Three on fives. Yeah, because the toughness seven. So three, five up, invulnerable saves. I take three wounds, it's half dead. Yep. Then it returns fire and it hits on twos and two of them hit. It'll kill on twos, kills two of you guys. And you have got an apothecary in that squad. Lovely apothecary with conversion bits from UK, Which can't help you because the strength of the weapon is at least Jeez. double your toughness. Next to the support squad, the Dreadnought is the last thing left to fire with its two warp fire cannons coming into the bikes. Let's And you can see, so let's see if you can hit. That's a hit. And the second shot is a hit. So that's six hits at strength six, breaching on a four up, wounding on twos. And in the end, only one breach which there is cover. Oh no, I'm a anti-grav. You never take cover. So one takes a wound. These are three up saves. You kill two of them in the end. And the Havoc launcher on the shoulder came in, caused two more wounds and injures one. So at the end of the shooting phase, not much damage done down this end of the battlefield, but there's been a lot of, a lot of advancing and there's a lot of point scoring stuff about to sweep through my lines down here and not a lot standing against it. We've sort of, you're sort of pushing that way. I'm pushing this way as we swing around the middle. My bikes need a leadership test. Leadership eight. And they hold. The Mordathan got hit. They should be leadership nine, but you've got the fear That's thing the, coming yeah. on because they're corrupted and they've never seen space marines that look like this before. We have got funny bits growing out of us. What have you done, Logar? What have you done? And the Mordathan fall back. Ooh. And they're running seven inches. So in the charge phase, you want to charge them, and I really didn't want them to break because I wanted them to overwatch you. Right, yeah. But I can't react because I'm falling back. You need a five-inch charge. We need to look how the... And oh, that's a failed no. charge. The interesting thing is if you'd have made the charge, then I'd have had to test a regroup, yeah. and if I'd have failed, you'd have swept, swept them all. Him. 
You didn't expect them to break. No. Caught wrong-footed. Instead, the tactical squad surge round this way. The Diabolus is going to do his psychic power in the charge phase. He's casting spells anyway. And that Goes passes. Up. And that means they're plus one strength and toughness until your next turn anyway. So yep. it keeps them a bit tougher. Does, Suddenly they're toughness five. And the more data are falling back. Are you doing any more charges anywhere else? I don't think I can. I don't think you can. I think everybody advanced or jumped out of vehicles. So as Korok stands in the middle of the battle grid and ruin and death rages around him, he calls out to his reserves and they will come on at the start of Raven Guard, turn two. So before I move anything, a couple of things. I need to regroup these. Yep. Leadership nine goes to eight and they do regroup. They can consolidate up to their initiative, but we can't charge. We're only snap firing. And my outflank might be disordered if I roll a one. Okay. It's not disordered, so close. just. I'm not sure I did the leadership test on the bikes. They hold anyway. So my outflank has come in and the unit right in front react and bust forward. So Korax countered by breaking away from the Terminators and we mean to clear up this tactical squad. The reason why you reacted forward is to cut down most of the auto cannon fire that's coming in from there because they're going to get it lit up by auto cannons, by snipers, by tacticals, I want them done, and then a Primark is going to jump on them. Jump on them. <laughs> done. There's the Mordathan, and you might be wondering why there's only two bikes left. Well, the one that took one wound, <laughs> as we spin up and swan over, got shot and passed his ter dangerous terrain test and fell out of his saddle. Yeah. And he's gone. He didn't react back with the Scorpius, the Scorpii, because it it's is immobilized. currently immobilized. <laughs> and the plan here is to throw my Terminators into the Plasma Squad. Overwatch will be nasty here as well, but I'm giving you lots of choices about what you can overwatch. You've got two reactions in the Assault phase, though, so you can overwatch twice. Charging through terrain, not entirely happy with, no. but we'll give it a go. Your Command Squad have got maces, which kind of suck against Dreadnoughts. Yeah, it's funny, so there's a Dreadnought. Walking there's a Dreadnought them. straight towards it. I figured if the Dreadnought went into them or went around this, whichever way he went, he's going to get caught by Argotal and all his beastmen, all his nasty, corrupted, chaos things of doom. So I might as well try and injure your Command Squad before he comes flying in and put something between you and the rest of my stuff as I continue to push up this way. Down on the other flank, things are looking a little bit more desperate for me. There is a tactical squad inside that. There's the Ashen Circle there. There's uh, more. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. So the first thing that I need to do is crack open that Rhino that I failed last turn. Get all the soft meat out so my Dreadnoughts can fire in at it. So we are firing four LAS cannons from here into the side of that Rhino. Threes to hit. And I only hit once. And it doesn't do anything but Sunder gives me the re-roll. And that's a penetrating hit. And you do get a 6-up save. Because I can't see it. <laughs> no. So it is a penetrating hit. It doesn't explode. The guys do get out. They might be pinned. But they're not pinned. Right, now they're out. Let's unload all the Volkite into them. Again, not reacting. Humble tactical squad. Here's the sergeant that hits on twos. The improviser gives the sergeant plus one ballistic skill and ignore night fighting. Everyone else hits on threes. The whole squad can ignore night though. Yeah. Volcock Cavaliers though. Wound on twos. Yep. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> oh. That looks awful. And that killed the squad almost twice over before I did the flagrate with the Volkite, which leaves the Laz Cannon guy, well, the only thing he can see now, the only thing he can see is the gavel back. So, twos to hit them, hit them all the time. Twos to wound them, wound them three times, and they have a five up and vulnerable save, which they make one of, and a five up feel no pain, which they make none of, and one was on a wound. So yeah. at least I kill one, that was great. Okay, so we're moving on to the big, the nasty Derrideo Dreadnought, which can see some more stuff, and he's gonna do the plasma carronade and all his shots in. To the Ashen Circle. I need to clear away this stuff which are come charging down towards me. Are you going to shroud this? Do anything for this? Yeah, I think we'll shroud this one. Yeah? Yeah. I what? changed my mind. You changed I, your mind. I don't want to shroud it. 
Glorious. Glorious martyrdom. One of them's just going to get his face absolutely melted as he throws himself in front of the fire. Once per battle, word bearer's special reaction. I kill one. Kill one. That's huge. That leaves them free to come charging into my Volkite guys next turn, and then I'll have to shoot at them next next turn with all the stuff down here. Okay. Uh, let's go across the snipers. We're going to continue with our sniper and sniper hate. You've got two snipers left. I don't want you to pin any of my stuff. Yep. I'm firing at your snipers. You've done your reaction. Sergeant hits on the two. The other guy hits on threes. Everything hits this time. Raven guard doing Raven guard things. And that one rends and those don't. One five up save and two three up saves. There's still a sniper standing there. And then I got down and had a look with this unit of snipers. And... Um, only three of them can see uh, Ashen Circle. So it feels like a waste. So let's fire at the Seekers. Yeah. See. Twos on the Sarge with his improviser. Threes on the other squad. Threes will wound you. And those all rend. But you've got Skirmish. You're in cover. So three five up saves. And we forgot our pinning tests, actually. They could be pinned and the other guy could be okay, so pinned. Two are going to die, but yes. uh, pinning. They are they pinned. pinned. And the other and single the sniper on, on his own. own. He's fine. I've done all I can to prevent the word bearer's charge on the right flank. We're coming down to the left flank now. So let's try and kill that Scorpius, finally. We're firing the bike, the sergeant. Uh, he hits on twos and he's not in melter range. So he doesn't do anything. The one in front is in melter range. And he hits. And so I get 2d6 for this and add it together. And 5 plus 8 is 13, and that is just a glancing hit. So I'm going to have to put these four las cannons into him again, because that gun is nasty, and only two of those las cannons hit. I need fours. That's two glancing hits. Now I could re-roll for Sunder. And hope for a while. Well, you're really killing it either way. <sighs> yeah, but you've got cover. You've got a lot oh, of cover, right. you see. So I need the pen. So I'm re-rolling, oh. and the shots bounce, or instead smash into the rock along the way. Scorpius will still be free to fire. There's a couple of bolters in the Terminator squad, which I fired into the squad that I want to charge. No damage caused. I'm across to my Dreadnought with three melters into your command squad yep. at point blank range. And two of them hit. And two of them wound. And you said they're Tartarus? They're yeah, Tartarus. So five up and vulnerable saves or death because it doubles you out. That's and that one's really cocked. And I take out two of them. Now we're going to do all the firepower over here from the tactical squad, tactical squad, the auto cannons that can see, and the snipers that can see, into this tactical squad that got lit up last time, and that is about to be charged by Korax. And when the crossfire dies down and the dust settles, there's five left in that tactical squad which need to take a leadership test. The Diabolus is in there. Oh, and they hold. Yet. Your command squad also took 25% casualties in the shooting phase. Yep. Yeah, and good. they hold. My bikers took 25% casualties. Yes, yeah, And They're they right. hold. Do they fear? And uh, leadership eight becomes eight, seven. seven. You're That's right. the sergeant. We're okay. We're all right. <laughs> and your sniper up here, who isn't pinned. No. But does he fall back? He holds. Uh, I killed, no, the killed the sergeant. So he, he does. does fall back. He repels down, ends up over there. That is the end of the shooting phase. We're on to the charge phase. I'm going to open up the charge phase by putting Korax into this squad. Would you like to react? Because there's some other charges coming on. And you've got two so reactions got two in reactions, the assault phase. Yeah. I don't think that's the one to do. Or, I don't think it's it? the one to do. I think they're dead anyway. They are, but there's three flamers at the front. Uh, which would hit the Terminators as well. It would hit the Terminators three, as well. Three. Lots of two-up saves going on here. There is two-up saves for days. I mean, the Terminators are going to try and charge the Plasma team and they breach. Yes. And then there's a dreadnought there that you might want to brace against. Yes, no, I think that. Yes, I think. I agree. I concur. Okay. Yes. So Quark's charges. He goes that far. The Terminators will charge the right. plasma team. He's definitely. Now you're watching. overwatching. Yeah. Let's see if I actually make the charge, because it's minus two, because I'm going through this. These aren't rocks, these are rubble. This is knee high. This is uh no. Ooh. Minus two to the charge means I'm only surging two. two That's yeah. a fail charge. And you're overwatching. And I'm overwatching. And the warp fire blasters hit on threes. What was that, James? Your dice are betraying me today. I know. Me. They know who like the they've, got, they've got your face on them or something. Exactly. They know who their master... Oh, 
is so these are like four up or five up. Yes. Four up. Okay. Okay. Um, and these wound anyway. Yep. So these are two up saves. A sergeant's on a wound. I don't have to apply any to him. And then these are all five up saves because they are Tartarus. And you kill two and a half on Overwatch. Yeah. After the Tartarus surge forward. These bikes. We're going to try and charge your Scorpius. You're going for it. We could hurt it. We'll get plus three to the charge because mm, we're fast. Ooh, we'll make the charge. You made it. Crump, we get in there, and the Dreadnought is going to try and charge your command squad. Do you want to yes. try and make it disordered? I think we'll try and make this one disordered. Leadership 10, and then I lose a attack. a attack. I will lose an attack. Oh, I could fail. Snake Eyes, because he's in terrain. No, he doesn't fail. He's well in He there. goes crumping in there. Then over here, we'll start the combat here, because I don't actually want to kill your Scorpius. I'm charging you to get the bonuses to hit and run. Yeah. It's a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the attacks with my chain swords, and if we hit vehicles on twos, we need sixes. We don't do anything to them. And then I need to pass an initiative test to hit and run. And I pass the initiative test, and this is 2d6, plus my movement is 16. And they end up going 21 inches away. They flew up, they flew over, they shot the thing, smashed into it, and they'll regroup somewhere else. So the bikes break free and swoop back round over here to get away from most of the guns from the word bearers. Now we're going on to Corax. Corax has eight attacks on the charge and he can pick a fighting style to give him extra attacks, extra initiative or murder strike. In this case, he's going to pick the Rage 4, which gets him up to 12 attacks. And of course, he's in on threes. He is a Primarch after all. But that unit is tougher. Strength 6 versus Toughness 5 because of the spell from the Diabolus. So we're wounding on 3s, but it shreds, and it's AP2, and that takes out the squad. One minute, the Diabolus is a 5 up and vulnerable save. It's Centurion. You can start tanking some saves. Um, no, they're all dead. They're all dead. <laughs> and Korax consolidates. He jumps to a high point, surveys the battle grid, Unafraid. He is a Primarch. Right, now we come down to your Legion Command Squad where you've got a Praetor who's got a higher initiative. Mm -hmm. The Command Squad pile in. The Praetor is a Biomancer and he goes to activate Biomantic Rage. Leadership check. Yes. He's good. Which passes. So you've got four attacks instead. Yep. You're hitting me on threes. Using your psychic thing and three of them miss. And then you wound on a twos, but fours rend. Nope. It wounds, it doesn't rend. And I make the save. And now we're at initiative four. Here's the maces from the rest of command squad on fours. Three hits. And you're going to need fives to wound. One wound. One. one two up save. I failed a save, you wound me. Got one. And because you're braced, and because you're the command squad, only three attacks and only hit back once. Yep. Wound on a two. It does wound, but it is brutal three. So three, five plus and vulnerable saves on one guy. And I rip him limb from limb. Does mean I won the combat by one. My yep. dreadnought's only on two wounds remaining. Leadership check. And you hold. And the dreadnought and the command squad are locked up. Being locked up is good. It's a good result. It means he can't get shot at. The Raven Guard have pushed very hard on this flank, doing all we can to shatter strike the lines and get as many units in the word bearer's deployment zone but they've still got many turns to go this game could end on turn five but it could go on to turn six and they've got a hard flank coming around this way in word bearer's turn two so in the word bearer's movement phase they continue the push on this flank the ashen circle moving down towards my snipers while seekers and seekers will attempt to draw some reactions in the shooting phase the tactical squad with the biomancy dude and the yeah. feel no pain. They're coming forward. They're free to fire as well. And then you had an interesting choice with uh, Algal Tile and the Galval back. You could have started pushing back against all my stuff. But there's some soft meat down here. And the goal of this mission is to break through the Raven Guard lines and shatter them. 
So you came straight towards my Volquet team, which decided to definitely react and take some yeah. steps back. Maybe you roll a snake eyes and fail the charge. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It's not like it didn't happen a minute ago. <laughs> I mean, you're going to slaughter all of those. And these two dreadnoughts back here are absolutely nasty with guns. But the last thing they want to be is locked in close combat. They can't fire at all. Yeah. Down in the middle, the fight continues. And your... Uh, Support squad took some steps back away from the Terminators. The Terminators went, ah, uh ah, -uh, and decided to move straight towards them, close the gap. The Dreadnoughts pulling back as well, giving the field to the Raven Guard a little bit. And your sniper over there, he regrouped and he's put his back to the rock. So this is really becoming a game of two halves. In the shooting phase, though, you remembered that you wanted to do some biomancy yep, stuff. we have. Which will get these guys up to toughness five. Yep. You need to pass the leadership nine. Nine. And you do, so their strength and toughness five. Yep. And also your terminators, which will yep. stop my strength nine, grab his power fist, doubling you out. Yep. And he's leadership ten. He's a praetor. And he passes. Really? We start the shooting phase up here with your seeker squad firing in at my snipers that are no longer here because they also got lit up with the Ashen Circle. Yep. We've all got flamers and there's a short range melter in there. You destroyed them They're utterly. Melty. I'm talking about Seeker Squads. This Seeker Squad, which were hiding around the block, are tr firing in at my Volkite Squad, trying to draw a reaction, James. I'm not reacting to You're this. Not reacting to it's this. It's only five shots. I'll okay. be fine. And you hit three times. See, so I'm going to be fine. Three's to wound, five's breach. And there's a breach. I need a six up save. You kill one of them. I have to take away one in line of sight and range. Which means the tactical squad are now free to fire at my Volkite squad. And because I reacted to Argo Tile's unit getting as far away from them as possible, there's only three that can see your tactical squad. If I could see them with all my guys, I would have returned fire Definitely, and tried to wipe them. Melt them. But uh, you can only shoot what's in line of sight and range, so I guess you're shooting and I'm not returning okay. fire. Yep. So you can only kill three of them, but you've got a lot of shots firing in. And a lot of you can see a lot of me. Well, three of me. Three's to hit. Your dice today, mate. They love me. They hate you. They hate. They do hate you. know me. why? It's because of the word bearers. Because of the word bearers. Erebus. Even Zinch hates the word bearers. And see, that's yeah, only we four fools, wounds. Four wounds. Four. Three up saves. You kill two of them anyway. Now the gavel back are getting their bolt spitters ready to fire into my heavy support squad, but Argo Tile tells them Hold. Hold. <laughs> Hold. Because <laughs> you really don't want them breaking. You no. want to charge them. Yeah. And I'll just start pulling from the front as well. Well uh, also it's if you break and move out of my charge distance, yeah. I can't then target the dreadnoughts. I know. Whereas now if they've not shot and they break you can do primary can... and secondary and try and charge both, potentially. Well, make the pri yeah. You have to make the primary. If you further secondary, you still make the primary. Also, if you shoot at them, I'll return fire with a lot of Volkite. Yeah, so we'll leave that one. So you're not shooting here. Yeah. Okay, so Down they're the locked up. We've got these units over here, then. We've got Dreadnoughts. We've got uh, the Warp Fire team. We've got the Scorpius, the Scorpii. Yeah. And the Scorpii is dropping up and over again. And this time, because there's not loads of big bikes and a Primark in the way... You can actually see. But can you hit? Can they hit? Will my dice betray you? Hit. Oh no, that's a direct hit. Hit six and six. Six in the auto cannon team. On Two's to wound. Team. Four's rend. Right. Two out here on threes. One of them dies. And then these are the rending shots. So you're going to start. You hit the guys with a little bit of cover. No. No. Okay. You kill. You kill five. There's two left. They take a pinning test. They're not pinned, and then six rocket rounds smash in to those dudes. Okay, so these are going to be five up skirmish saves because yep. they're recons. New. No. <laughs> these are three up saves. So you kill four in one squad, well, three in this squad. They'll take a pinning test, and they're not yeah, pinned right, either. But an awesome shot from the Scorpius has wiped out eight of the infantry over here. Now we're onto the Dreadnought with the conversion beamer. Beaming into my snipers up in the tower. Got a hit first. That's a hit. And the second shot. That'll scatter an inch. And you hit nine guys and wound them on twos. Oh dear. Right. At this range, it's still AP4. So I still get my three up saves. And you kill three of them. But I have to take a blinding test. And I really want to roll a one. Did I shut off my improviser? No. 
So you kill three and they're blinded. They're only snap firing next turn. Okay. Now we're down to all the warp fire, the dreadnought and the support squad. You're firing in at my terminators, so I'm definitely reacting here. Okay. I'm doing my once per battle Raven Guard thing. Okay. I get a four I get to move, and if I could move so you can't see me, you can't shoot me. And I can't do that. Yeah. But I do get a four up shrouding save until okay. the end of the shooting phase. Excellent. But the warp fire hits on three. And moves on twos, but breaches the armor on a four up. Two up saves, we're good. Breaching saves, one was injured and another one falls. Yeah. And then shrouding because oh, once yeah, per yeah. battle Raven Guard thing. And that doesn't say well one still dies. One still dies, yeah. Aha. So you were thinking about firing the other warp fire thing into my Terminator squad. I was. But they're shrouding, they're fading to black. And you get to keep your shrouding. I do until the end of the phase. Which is brutal. I like that. So, so I think I might just um, shoot him over that way instead. Uh, my tactical squad. Hey, your tactical squad. This is going to sting. I've already reacted. So two plasmas yes. and the missiles. Plasma hits. hits. Second plasma, which is not plasma. That scatters an inch. That will still cover a load. Warfire wounds on twos. Fours will just kill him. There is no cover. That's not a lot, man. So six are just wiped out. Yep. And this is the only Artificer in my army. So if there was a time to tank on Artificer, it is now. Two up. Two up. The sergeant's yelling, get down! Incoming fire! He and it. he managed to tell the unit, good, we're good. And only six of them die. But then you have a, what is it called? Havoc launcher Havoc as launcher. well. Yep. And Havoc launcher hits. And there's more wounds on threes. Um, I'll tank these on normal guys, and I lost seven in total. Yep. And at the end of the shooting phase, this unit got brutalized and need to take a leadership test, and they hold. Oh. I saw that for a moment, and the snipers up here, which are pinned, may continue, may fall back. Uh, they yeah, hold right. as well, so they hold, heavy weapons team. and the heavy weapons team, leadership eight, the sergeant is here, this is the one. and they hold. Right. Which they don't really want to do, because <laughs> now you're going to charge with the Galvor back, and I have to overwatch. I've got six dudes left. Firing five shots each, though. James. Yeah? I forgot to do the sergeant separately. Okay. It's my bad. Do you want to stick an extra one back in no. or something? Or, no, you have to. That back. many wounds. Full three up saves. Okay, and then a five up feel no pain before we do deflagrate. And one's on two wounds. I kill one. I kill two. Kill two yeah. And then deflagrate. Um, and it continues to burn three more times. And you fail one of those saves. I fail the feel no pain as well. So I kill two. And then on the charge, you need a five. <laughs> Good luck. It's a wound. And here we go. Fingers crossed. And that's a seven. I've got leadership on these as well. Oh, yeah. They hold, and on the snipers, they hold. Okay, leadership is good. It's solid. Argotar on the Galvor back pile in, and here is just Argotar's attacks, and he hits on threes. He's got rage, murder strike, all the things. He's strength five, AP three. He's killing on threes. He's weapon skill six. Does he hit on twos? No, it's no, got to be gotta double, be double or more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, he's fine. That's threes cool. to wound. Um, he kills four of them. There's two left. Here's the remaining Galvor back, just yeah. hitting on threes at initiative five before I even get a chance to strike. Moving on threes? Oh yeah. Six is a rending murderous strike, but these are all AP3 anyway. That's 17 wounds, yep. plus the four from Argotal. That's 21, 21 dead marines, and there's only five left there is. out of the unit of 10. <laughs> nice. They're rather brutal. Then the unit consolidates, and then we go back down to the fight with the Praetor and my Dreadnought. And you're going to try to try and pass the leadership test again to get your Biomancy off, which you do. So you've got four attacks. That's for psychic total. weapon, isn't it? Psychic rage. Yes. Four attacks. Hits on threes. This time he hits three times at strength ten, rends on a four. Okay, <sighs> two wounds, no rending, which is good because I've only got two wounds left on my Dreadnought. So I've only got one, one wound left on the Dreadnought. And then we fight at the same initiative. Say that again. 
I was just saying, I'm not used to... I've got two guys left and all I've got is four attacks. So yeah. I'm not used to these little numbers. It's like... Uh, what do you mean? Well, I'm used to world eaters. Right? It's like <laughs> two guys, 17 attacks, and plus one for the sergeant. And yeah, no. It's well, like, these four attacks have to kill that dreadnought on one They wound. do, but these guys have plus one strength as well. They will do. that make any difference? It will, if you can hit. And you can hit. They can it hit. means you're wounding on fours instead of th uh, fives. Woohoo! And you wound twice. If I roll a one, it's a dead dreadnought. Ooh. I don't no, roll doesn't. a one. And I do fight you back on fours, and I fail. Mm. So I lost that combat, but dreadnoughts are fearless. fearless. That's fine. We're locked up. And that is the end of Word Bearers turn three. And over here, I've got two dreadnoughts about to be charged and some speeders potentially about to be charged. It's turned into a tale of two halves. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely split the board in half, haven't we? Yes, but my Terminators will be free to charge some things just like you're free to charge some things. So let's continue with this fight in the bloody valley of Isfam 5. In the Raven Guard movement phase, I continue to pressurise this attack on this flank. The Bikers, third time's a charm, into that Scorpius. And the Terminators wanted to charge your Dreadnoughts, but one of them stepped back. You can easily get up. He's a Dreadnought. You can get up and over there. I know you didn't want to do it, but you said you were. And I said, no, if you want to react, you can react. He stepped back. He's fine. So I guess I'm going to charge that Dreadnought. Fair enough. And then, of course, Korax has jumped up and over. Landed down here. There. He didn't want to be anywhere near the centre when the Galvor back was there. No. But now he feels a bit more... He doesn't want right. to really engage those Terminators either. But... Uh, I need to get rid of that warp flame squad. They are brutal. Uh, I'm keeping the more Dathan stuck here for now. They will be a point if I can get them into your deployment zone at the end of the game. But they're not really doing anything. And if I step round and shoot at your plasma, you'll just overwatch them and kill them. You'll just return fire and kill them. Yeah. Talking about stuff that's hiding. You remember the three tactical marines that were left? They ran. They've been bucked inside the rhino. The yeah. immobilized rhino. <laughs> And the other team have ran and hidden down behind them as well. Corix is saying, hold, stay here, stay here. Then in the backfield, we've got Laz Cannons. And Laz Cannons and Laz Cannons all looking at Argyle Tile. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not him today. Need to get, that means I'm not doing much to this lot over here yet. You've still got lots of scoring options. I did snap fire my pin snipers. And they didn't do anything. So we're going to continue with the shooting phase with the six snipers down here that can see that squad over here. Yep. But I got down and had a good look. And that's your apothecary at the back. I can't see him. So you can't snipe him out. And the sergeant hits on twos. The other guys hit on threes. These will wound on threes with these sniper rifles. And fives rend. One cover save. No. Nope. And two armor saves. Which yep. you make. And then a feel no pain on the cover save. No, nope. and then a pinning test. Pinning test. And you're not pinned. Nine, You've yeah. got a Diabolist in there, so you're okay. So only one dies, then the auto cannons fire in, and they all hit, and they all wound. So three more saves of three up. Sorry, four more saves, tell a lie. I got them all through. And then the feeling of the pain on those two wounds, and I only killed two. So that's the only fire coming in there. We're coming across to Korax. If I shoot at your unit, you might return fire. Yep. And then when I charge you, you might overwatch. And he is a Primark, but that's a lot of shots that breach on a four. So he's doing it, yeah? So he's definitely keeping his pistols holstered. He doesn't want you to see him coming. He's invisible. He's the Shadow Lord. You can't see him. Instead, I'm going to come across to two multi metalists firing at that Scorpius instead. Yep. Sergeant hits on a two. The other guy hits on a three. It is twin linked. I get two hits through, and then Armour Bane. Penetrating hit. Penetrating hit. Dead Scorpius, finally, which doesn't detonate. It's just a wreck. Then none of this down here wants to fire. My Terminators definitely don't want to fire, because return fire, no, again, you should do that one. quite scary. They don't, I don't want you to see me coming. They're all hiding. Yep. No, sorry, they're tactically repositioning. <laughs> bellies to the ground. They're definitely not hiding. <laughs> So we'll come along to all the shots that are going to rain into Argyle Tile, starting off with these speeders, shooting straight in to the bad man himself. Three last cannons hit, and three of them wound. Five of them bone. Yep. You only fell one, and the feel no pain. And feel no pain. On a last cannon. Nope. Okay, one takes a wound. 
He's on one wound remaining. Four last cannons to the face. Point blank range. How could I miss? I miss once anyway. They dodge to the right. That's how. Demon quickness. And I only wound twice. Five up and vulnerable save. And a five up for no pain. Okay, I've killed one of them. Got killed one. one of them. And then I've got these land speeders, which are in multi multi range as well, which are twin linked, so they hit. I'll do the last cannons to hit now because they're all going to wound on twos and you get a five up, then a five up. Yeah. Uh, that one's really cocked. Okay, so five wounds, five five ups, and then five five ups. And that's two saves. And that's another Kills one another bites one. the dust. So we're down to three with Argul Tal, and that is three too many. Now I've got this Dreadnought, which could shoot in at them as well, but I haven't killed enough to save that Dreadnought. Right. So even if I shoot in, it's dead. You've locked it up. You're yep. going to kill it. So we're going to shoot in down to this lot over here. I'm going to do the gets hot on the plasma cannonade and put, give myself a wound. This version does a blast. I'm putting it there so I can see him. And you haven't shrouded yet, so you are shrouding these shots. Yep. Because this is strength eight, so your feel no pain doesn't work. And you haven't reacted yet. And that one hits. And that's seven hits, which wound on twos, but fours breach. Full armor. And then a five up shroud. No. And then four six up covers. And then a five up shroud. You lose four guys. Then the ALOS missile launcher fired in and the heavy bolter causing no more wounds. That is the end of the shooting phase and it's not enough to force a leadership test. Still not, yeah. In fact, the only leadership test is Argo tells you. He's not fearless. He's not stupid. He is corrupted though. <laughs> um, so don't fail leadership 10. He's okay. Otherwise you'd take extra wounds. Yep. Uh, and that's the end of my shooting phase. So now we want to charge. Korax is going to charge the support squad. So I think that's going to be Overwatch. Oh, oh is it? Well, you've well, you got two reactions in the assault phase. That's all right. That's good then, yep. Here it comes. Hitting on threes. Will my dice betray you again? No. That's good shooting. And this is strength six. So it wounds on fours, but they breach. They go straight through his armor. Okay. Right. He's a Primark. He has a four up and vulnerable save. He also has a four up shrouding. He's invisible. So I roll fours. And then fours. And he takes three wounds off of him on the way in, and he makes his in. Yeah. Crumpy gets in there. We have a second charge. These Terminators are going to charge this Contemptor. And if you blind me on the way in, I could be in a bit of trouble. That's what I'm hoping for. Right, let's see if you hit. Uh, that scatters two inches. That will still hit. And the next shot hits. Hit. At this range, Conversion Mima is only strength seven. It will wound on twos. But it does blind, though it won't double me out. One so that was in there, yeah. So uh, two up saves. One was injured. He falls. You do kill one. Right, blinding test. There's a chaplain in there. Yep. They don't have improvisers. So his initiative test is five or less. So I'm good. Otherwise, my weapon skill would have been dropped down to one. Yeah. And then we charge. What's hoping? <laughs> And the Terminators and the Chaplain surround the Dreadnought and the Chaplain strikes out on fours and hatred. That's what Chaplains do. And then Raven's Talons, it would normally be sixes to rend, but fives to rend with the reroll because they are special lightning claws. And That's that is four invulnerable saves on your Dreadnought. And your Dreadnought takes four wounds and then it kicks out three times on fives. On threes, sorry, it hits twice and it will wound on threes. Twos. It wounds on two. It doesn't no, not wound. Like that, it, doesn't. it doesn't wound. Your dice! <laughs> then here's the remaining Raven's Talons. And they need fives to hit you. But the chaplain is screaming, Remember the dead! Remember the ruin of the drop site massacre! Remember! And your Primark is watching. And they re roll all the wounds. And that. Is beautiful. It's many wounds. Lots of invulnerable saves coming up. I think we've got a dead dreadnought. Ooh. Definitely a dead dreadnought. What's that? One, two, yeah. three. Yeah, you're oh, taking them. To a number, literally. It blows up yeah. and hits all of my guys. How many of my guys are left? 
Two, four, six, seven. Seven. There's seven dice. You wound them on twos. As they get caught in the explosion, six of them get hit. Does any shrapnel pierce the armor? One of them yeah. falls. They spread out, peer over the hull of that burning Scorpius and eye up a second dreadnought. And now we come onto Korax. And he is enraged. So extra so attacks. Angry. He hits on threes. He missed quite a few times, probably because you shot him. Probably because he's so angry. And he's bleeding. Uh, he wounds on twos. He kills on twos. These are AP2 with shred. He kills six of them. It's also blinding. A five or six. No, so you're not blinded. You can hit back. And uh, the three normal dudes, including the sergeant, hit me on fives. And they don't land a blow. And then you have the apothecary, who's got three attacks with this chainsaw. And he's going to hit on fives. Oh, he lands a blow. Yes, one. He's going to need sixes to wound this Primark with his chainsaw, oh, though. Shred. Rev that chainsaw. No. no. And you lost that combat by five. Yep. So your leadership can never be... So this is where your special rule kicks in, because normally you'd need a three or more to pass. No, actually a six. Now you need a six, which sounds bad, because it's... then you're going to still be locked up with a Primark. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you want to fall back. And that's a pass. You're all right. They're locked up with a Primark. We would have failed that if it wasn't for our word bearer. Eagerness. You would. And then he would have probably swept the whole squad. And to be honest... Being locked up with him, I quite like, because yeah. you're not falling back. You can't shoot my Primark. Now we come back to the murder bucket, which is your... Yeah. They're doing well, your Praetor. They're doing all right, aren't they? They're all buffed up. He's going to do a psychic test do one more time. One, yeah. and try and take the last wound. And he, he fails. fails it. So I'm D3, sure that's the perils of the walk. D3 mortal one. wounds yeah. to the unit. Yeah, let's do that first. Ah! On the table. Take what? a wound. The unit takes a wound. Yeah. His psychic test fails. And but yeah. some what? of the things still go off even when they take the psychic test, so we need to check, especially okay. the word bearer he wants. <laughs> okay. So what happens is psychic feedback lashes the unit. Fortunately, it doesn't kill one. Yeah. He's still initiative five. He's still got a mace and he can still fight. And they were biomancy, so he's plus one strength for yes. that. Yeah. So he's hitting on threes, he's got a better weapon skill, and he's yeah. wounding on fours because he's biomancy'd up, and that's a wound, and my dreadnought is on one wound remaining. Can your Praetor be a hero? Please be a hero. If I roll a one. Let's roll that one one. <sighs> that's the opposite of a one winters. Four attacks with my regular guys. And one hit. Hit on fours. Yeah, weapon skill five versus weapon skill five. It wounds. Again, if I roll a one. Oh, that's nearly a one. You don't kill my dreadnought. So I've got to hit you back on fours. Last time I missed every single time. This time I only one. hit once. I wound once. It's brutal three. So three saves. Three five up in ones. And I that's kill the one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can roll ones. Thanks. <laughs> that leaves the Praetor and the Banner standing. Don't fail a leadership test of nine. Uh, ten, isn't it, for a Praetor? Not like that. Um, Uh-oh. See, my dice roll really high for you. See? Really high. That's box so cards. So great. Yeah? I can't believe these dice today, mate. They're really, really telling the story that everyone hates world eaters. <laughs> <laughs> right, but it's initiative roll-off for me to catch you. Now, your initiative is higher, yep. so you add five to a dice roll. Yep. I only add four to a dice roll, but I have two dice because Korax gives me Crusader. <sighs> That's what Crusader does. So you get eight. Yep. Korax gives my whole army Crusader. Okay. If I beat that, You've run through me. Yes. So a five, and I've wiped the command squad. And I don't wipe the command squad. They managed to fall back successfully 2d6 inches. And they break and run six. I like to think they're looking over their shoulder, and there's no, a Primark stood we've, there. We've got to completely rethink that. What, what because have we done? I'm corrupted. Yes. So I can't, I don't fall back. You don't fail morale. I take d3 more wounds. So when you failed that morale, you just take d3 more wounds. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a corrupted unit. I'm a corrupted okay. unit. Okay. I might have to edit that. Or yeah. I might leave it all in. It's D learning. We're D3. Learning. D3. D3. For two. So okay. that kills my banner. Yes. And then the Praetor is stood it's there, mano o oh mano, with a contempt of Dreadnought. Yeah. Here we are after the word bearer's movement phase. While explosions can be heard in the distance and atomic fires burn the horizon, they continue to shatter strike down into the Raven Guard lines. The Ashen Circle looking at the javelins. Argyll, Tal and the Galvor back is deep already in the Raven Guard lines and wants to take down this Ancient. We have a couple of Seeker squads here and the Tactical squad with the Diabolist holding firm. And then round here, 
The Dreadnought takes a few steps back, having seen what happened to the other Dreadnought from the Terminator squad, but he's also taken a few steps back so he can thread the needle under that arch and put his plasma or his warp fire down into this sniper team. And I didn't return fire or shroud, and when the snipe smoke clears, there's one guy left standing there. Ooh, that lone gun sniper. is absolutely brutal. Then up at this side, the Ashen Circle are not shooting. <laughs> yeah, and do you know, it was really, because I've got that the melt pistol in there as well. I know. And the flamer, and it make, I want to, but it's just not a good idea. Well, you're lighting up it? a charge, so I'd I love to totally return fire charge. and overwatch you. I like to think that they're slightly distracted by this demonic thing they've never seen in their lives before. Exactly. Think it, and they're shooting it, and they don't see them coming, and if they pull the trigger, yeah. then they're going to get they're lit gonna up. They're going to get them. So you're not shooting there. No. Instead, you're shooting with the Seekers here. Yeah. Four of them can see my pinned snipers up here. Yeah. And they hit on threes. And they wound on threes and fives breach. And there's a breach, which kills one. Then over here, there's two more Seekers, and they can load Kraken rounds. And they did, and polished off the last of the snipers. You know, I forgot to fire my Rhino two turns in a row, because it's a mobilized <laughs> and thing. This thing... It's still fine. It's got a melter on. You just reminded me. And it's firing in at this last sniper here. This is the very last sniper. Can you kill him? Can, we? Can you kill him? You hit him. You wound him. And he makes his skirmish safe. safe. Loves it. Then we come down to the tactical squad. You're doing the biomancy thing one more time to yep. toughen them up. And they're that tougher. Works. And it's the last thing you can shoot. Yeah, because you've got to shoot all of them into the javelins. Yep. So I might as well return fire with the javelins. And here's all the bolt guns raining in on threes. Winning on sixes though. And you still get three through. Three, three up saves. I make the saves. I return five. You're getting cover. I hit with everything and I roll three ones to wound. <laughs> Six up saves. Six up saves. And then you've got your apothecary because they're toughness five now. Yeah. And you can do it. And in the end, I only kill one. Kill one more. And that is the end of the shooting phase. That lone sniper over there needs to take a leadership test and he holds. He's still fine. He's the last one of 20 snipers. And then we have a charge and I can react once. So you're going to draw out the overwatch from Argul Tal or yeah. you're going to draw the I overwatch from here? Argul Tal in. <sighs> is there any point in overwatching him with four last cannons? There isn't any point in overwatching him with four last cannons. <laughs> So the Galvor back make the charge. Let's try and kill the Ashen Circle in Overwatch. Here's all my last cannons. Um, I missed twice. And here's the multi melters. And then I'm killing on twos. Oh, I killed two of them. Two <laughs> they make the charge. They have scorched earth. So instead of three hammer of wrath hits, six hammer of wrath hits. You need sixes. And there's a wound already. I make that save. And then they're hitting on fours with all their axe rakes, and that's a pretty good spread. Share of ones. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then it is strength five, but it shreds. So you need six fives to wound, but you got the reroll with a shred and an AP three. I don't get a save. And that kills one of the javelins, puts one down to three wound remaining. But at the same initiative, I swing my uh, things back again at you, and I'm wounding you on fours with shred. But you have full armor saves on them. And I kill one, but I lost that combat by four. <laughs> so uh, leadership four or less. And I fail. And you can try and sweep me. Initiative roll off. You add four to this. I do two. And I definitely beat you. And basically I fall back off the off table the anyway. Yeah. And the Ashen Circle regroup. And then Argul Tal attacks the Dreadnought. And he's hitting on threes. He's hitting on threes. And this rends and murder strikes on fives. And that is two murder strikes. So two five plus invulnerable saves. And oh, I make them no. both. And the remaining three at initiative five hit on fours. And these rend and the murder on sixes. Argo does it on fives and there's a wound. And can I make another invulnerable save? I do. Excellent. Which is okay, because I'm locked up with you, yep. so I'm not shooting you. I'll kick back. Um, I kick him once. I don't I don't wound him. We're locked up. You're locked up with that dreadnought. 
Um, you will get through them sooner or later. Eventually. Uh, now we need to go down to your Praetor oh, yeah. versus my Dreadnought. If he passes his psychic test and manages to get a rending four up blow in, he could kill it. So we need under a tear, ten and under. You do. Oh, I okay. saw that five, and I was just like, don't be a six. All right, initiative four attacks. five, three attacks, hitting on th- four, attacks, four attacks, hitting on yeah. threes. With Biomancy specialness. Oh, really? Two hits through. Strength ten, winning on twos, but fours rend. Right, that's a two up save and a five up save. One wound on the Dreadnought. Here's the two up. Here's the five. I should have done. Here's the five up. Dead Dreadnought. You take him out. You take him out. He blows up five inches, which hits your dark guy and wounds him. And on the two, he dies in the explosion. He doesn't die on the explosion. You make the two up save. It's going to hit Korax as well and wound him on a two. Oh, yeah. It does. (gasps) And I fail that save. Korax goes down to two wounds remaining. And then it hits all your dudes. But we've got to do my attacks from Korax first, actually, because he would oh, yeah, hit yeah, he you first, first. Yeah. with his seven attacks, because he's higher initiative. Yep. But Korax did get hit by the explosion. Uh, and he hits three times. What? I don't get rage, because I'm not charging. He wounds three times. He kills three of them. I think that's the squad, because once the, they yeah, get pulled the away, the apothecary dies as well. That's what happens. Yeah, once you remove the last three models that an apothecary is attached to, he's busy harvesting gene seed. Oh, really? And he's gone. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's a, um, that's a new thing for me. So I go down to two. But however, I forgot to do my it will not die last turn. Oh, yeah. So I'm doing my it will not die this turn. He might die. He's on two wounds <laughs> remaining. And that's the end of the fight phase. And that is the end of turn three. And apart from a couple of dreadnoughts stuck over here and one of them can still fire... I have no footprint around this side of the battle grid. I've got very few guys left in my deployment zone. The rest are pushing around here. It's been absolutely brutal. It has been savage. But then most of the word bearers have been brutalised as well. There's not a lot of them left. No. But they're a long, long way from my firepower. Except for this last little praetor here that killed my dreadnought. And there's Korax. Do I send him in to kill that Praetor? I feel like Honest Man 5, he would know that guy. Praetors are named. They're Lucius, they're Garrow, they're Loken, they're Khan. And he's like, Charlie! (laughs) Charles Akus! You were a great man once. I shall now kill you. As we go on to Raven Guard turn (laughs) 4. At the end of Raven Guard movement phase, while the Contemptor Dreadnought is being ravished by demons... The Derrideo decides to take a couple of steps back. Yep. Behind him, these two javelins saw what happened to their buddies on the other side of the battle grid from the Ashen Circle. So I've moved them round to get Laz cannons in range <laughs> to kill the Ashen Circle. Because we're, we're going on to turn... This is turn four, then we've got five, and maybe a six on a 50-50. Yep. And scoring stuff is worth two points down here. Yep. Non-scoring stuff is worth a point. So right now you've got four points in my deployment zone and I want to stop that. And there's a lot more points about to come in. Round the other side, the Terminators clambered over the Scorpius, making their way down towards that Dreadnought, ignoring the sniper down there who regrouped. But so you step back, took an action to get away. Maybe that'll keep you safe. Maybe. Then down in the middle, my bikers want to kill that rhino on one wound remaining. And Korax is going to go against Charles Akus. Yep. He's, he's no fool, though. He's joined up with the more Dathan Strike team. Right. Um, because he doesn't want to be entirely on his own on two wounds. He's feeling that a bit right he's now. He's feeling a bit pressured, he, he? He might need a little bit of help. So let's fire in at uh, your rhino over here. Uh, we're hitting that on that. And it's a twin linked. And we hit both of the times. Armour Bane on one. Armour Bane on the other, no cover, both of the shots go through, and the Rhino blows up, and it detonates three inches. Does it hit Charles Akus? Just the it, left... It, it is just. Just. The left track guard spins off, hits him in the head. He hasn't got a helmet on. If he doesn't roll a two up, he's dead. He's alive. <laughs> it's, okay. it's smashed off the back of his carapace armour. Then I'm not shooting with the Terminators. I'll shoot Cut Charles now. Korax okay. pulls out his pistols. Oh, Wrath fire. and Judgment. You can if you want to. Mm. He hits you once. 
It rends on a three. That's a rend. Is he in Tartarus? Oh, no, he's got an Iron Halo. Four up save. He's all right. Oh. The Mordathan pull out their shotguns and they hit on twos and they wound on... Did you do your psychic thing? You didn't this turn. Uh, no. So they wound. Two up saves. <gasps> that flicked on a one then. <laughs> So no damage caused, you're not returning fire. No. This guy's the biomancy. Yeah. He's the esoterist, yeah, which yeah. can have up to 12 shots. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, getting my um, magical powers confused. <laughs> yes. Then I got down and had a look at the sniper and the auto cannon guys. Nothing. I can nothing. see nothing. So we have two javelins that can fire and the Derradeo. I think I'm going to do the Derradeo one more time into this mess here. We'll put the template there, it gets hot, and I don't lose another wound. You don't need a shroud this time, because they're toughness five. Yeah. I think they were last time anyway, yeah. but um, you can use the feel no pain yeah. from these hits, and that scatters a bit. And the plasma carronade, wounds on twos, and they rend. I was going to say they're all rended. So they're three up saves. Two three ups. With a feel no pain. Yeah, One's nope. dead, and they're six ups. With a feel no pain. Five get through. And the sweeties from the apothecary don't help no any. A lost missile launcher hits one, uh, twice. Wounds twice. AP three. Six up saves. And five up feel no pain. Makes one. And a pinning test. The missile launcher pins. And they're not pinned. Then the heavy bolter chattered in and didn't kill any more. And this big squad of 20 is down to six with an apothecary and with your esoterist. And then these two guys are going to get lit up by four las cannons from the javelins. So you might as well shroud this. This is the last shot of the thing. This is revenge. You swept my other javelins away. And I missed twice anyway. <laughs> and the snake eyes, <laughs> I don't my, even wound. my rolling. So the East Terrace needs to take a leadership test of 10, He's and he good. holds, they hold firm, and then we have some charges coming on. We're going to charge in with the Terminators, and you're overwatching. Putting the blast right in the middle, and the first shot is going to scatter an inch, as well. and the second shot hits. hits. Right, that's nine hits, but it also hits your dude in the back, yep. a bit of splash damage, and it breaches and kills him. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're... Does it do a thing? Uh, no. no, it's if you have a cover save and he doesn't, ah, right. he's, in yeah, he's in the open. Skirmish improves your cover save you. by one. Yep. Uh, cover save granted by terrain, not by intervening models. Anyway, oh, wow. two's to wound, four's breach. Okay. Um, so these are two up saves, and one dies, and these are five up saves, and three die in the Overwatch. And that leaves my chaplain and two guys with hammers, and one of them is the injured sergeant from the start. And I need an 11 inch charge. We do. Can you do it? Good luck. <sighs> it's all the six. I thought you'd got it then. <laughs> Instead, we surge five. Yep. Fail charge. I think they might be in, pro in trouble. And then Korax and the Mordathan will try and charge here. here. Now, Korax adds three to this. Uh, the Mordathan are going to get, well, Korax gets there. And these guys go five, and if they end up in coherency, I think I'm good. You're all right. I, you look all right. Now, we make the charge. It's That's armor. good. We have a Hammer of Wrath from Korax, and it wounds you, and it impact hit. Two up save. Charles, oh. Charles Akus is knocked back. He takes a wound, and then the fighting stance of Korax changes. He's going to do his murderous strike magic. Here we go. But first, he needs to hit you on threes, and he misses four times. These are wound on twos with shred and on four ups their murderous strike. So one murderous strike. So that is an invulnerable save or death. He's and he makes, makes it. it yeah. And then three AP2 saves. And he's got two oh, wounds he's remaining. Alive. He's still alive. Two wounds remaining. I'm going to bonk you on the head, mate. <laughs> are you going to do your magic thing one more time? I am going to do my magic thing one more time. Leadership tap. Any of uh, you're team. fine. Yeah. So these are biomantic yeah. attacks. Yep. So your attacks now become strength 10, AP4, running on a 4 up. And he hits Korax three times. And he's going to wound on twos, that unit. 
and they wound, and that one rends. Yeah. Now, if I apply these to more data and it insta kills them, yeah, and that's a four up and vulnerable save. So what I'm going to do is apply that to a more data to kill the injured one. Okay. And these I'm going to put on Korax okay. because he's got a two up save and he's got two wounds left and he definitely won't fail, right? And he definitely won't roll two I'm ones. I'm so confident that I'm going to roll both of these at the Can same time. Can you borrow time. my ones for this? Yeah. I'm going to roll both. I'm not going to roll them one at a time. You, no, I'm just going to roll them together. together. Just dead casual life. I'm not going to get gonna snake eyes. He is the Primark or the Raiden guard. He'll be fine. Oh, he's See, fine. he's fine. And we're locked up for some we reason. We are somehow. And then the more data and part. I, I had a little squeaky voice. And they can fight. Did I just win that combat? It's like, like, I think I actually got more no, no, hits through than no, you. No, we're, no, we're fearless anyway. Got, Two yeah, attacks each, plus one for the charge. Load out. Um, right. Two of them have got charnable blades. Okay. But we're hitting you on fives. Yep. Two hits. Ooh. Charnable blades. Four's wound, five's breach. There's a breach. Ooh, yeah. He's on two wounds. Four up. He's yes. still on two wounds. And then my sergeant with a power axe on the charge will hit you on fives. And he hits once. Strength five. Doesn't wound. Do, you won that. I know, you, I know it's fit you're fearless and it doesn't yeah. matter, but I, I still just won that combat. I don't know. <laughs> don't quite know what happened there. Uh, Korax bounced. Okay, <laughs> so the charge here failed. Charles Akus, who killed my Dreadnought, stands firm, raging at my Primark. This charge round here failed. Let's go down to the Raven Guard deployment zone and find out what Argul Tal does. Argul Tal hits on threes. And he only hits twice. A bit like my Primark. <laughs> uh, fives rend and our murderous strike. So there's a murderous strike. Last time I made all my five and vulnerable saves. This time I can't make one. That'll be D3 wounds. Because it's murderous for two wounds. Here's the rest of the ground wall back on fours. Drop dice, don't count. Looking for sixes for rending and murderousness. No. So just two wounds off the dreadnought so far, who kicks back and misses every single time, but we're nice. fearless and locked up. At the end of the word bearer's movement phase, most of the units take cover. I can't see the seeker squads or the Ashton Circle or the tactical squad without moving now. Argletal is calling out over the Vox, telling people to duck and cover. The goal is to break the lines. I like to think that there's some more over here somewhere in the next battle grid. Yeah. That's where the weak and injured are. That's where the apothecaries, because well, I haven't got any on the battle grid right now. Yeah. And they want to break on through to the other side, and we're trying to get through that way. I don't know who's winning yet. There's a lot of scoring stuff down here. I've got a lot of scoring stuff over there. You have. But you're ducking and covering. Dreadnought's taking a few steps back and firing one more time. And you're hitting. Well, let's see if we hit. Let's see what we hit. Uh, it scatters one inch. That will still cover all three of them. And then another one. And that hits. That's, hit. That's six hits in total. And then the miss. Two's wound. Six hits in total. And four's breach. Oh, mama. Okay, so two up saves. I'm okay. Breachy, breachy, breachy McBreach face. You kill another Terminator. Yeah. The Praetor stood there and the sergeant which one? on one wound remaining. He's, he's yeah, yeah, he's the there. sergeant's got a bit of bling on him, which is a bit rare for Raven Guard, but yeah. But he likes his bling. He and likes then the his missiles. Bling. Then the Havoc Launcher. This would have hit at the same time, so that hits three, and this wound's on threes. Uh two more wounds, two more two up saves, and I'm okay. Right. Now, are you going to psychically buff this unit in case I bring stuff round to shoot at you? I think we do it. If it fails, you're taking wounds. wounds. There's not very many not left. I saw the six. I you're saw okay. The six. Are you buffing Charles and then we'll Boss Charles Akus. No, he must oh, die. No. Oh, oh he's, he's right. leadership ten. He's leadership ten. He's fine. Before we get on to the main event, let's see what Argultal does against this dreadnought in round three of the fight, and he's hitting on threes. And he only hits oh. once. His arm's getting tired. It is. Ren's a murder strike on a five, but at least that one counts. Five up and run, which I fail, and this is D3 damage. It's on Can't four it. wounds remaining. It's down to one wound remaining. Can the rest of the Galvor back finish it off? And they will hit on Three. fours. Web skill fours. five versus web skill five, yeah. Six is the magic six. number. Murder strike and rending. There's yeah, a murder strike rending. If I fail a five up and vulnerable, say dead dreadnought. Dead Dreadnought. And when it blows up, it'll hit all your guys and wound them. 
<laughs> Wound <laughs> one once with a three up save and a five up feel no pain. He's and fine. you're fine. What was that? Definitely would have been. Well, I said almost would have been better staying in combat, but it was actually, it should have been definitely would have been better staying in combat. There's a lot of stuff that's going to shoot Argotar next turn. A lot of stuff that's going to shoot I think he might be shrouding. Much he's got his feel no pain, he'll be fine. Okay, let's go down to round two my Primark versus oh, this yeah. traitorous word bearer's prime, uh, Praetor. He must die. I was toying with him last turn. Just playing with him in your talons. This time, I hit him five times. Wound him on twos. Mo uh, rend. Do you still wound him on twos? Yeah, his strength six. Oh, wound on threes. So I'll reroll that one because he buffed himself. Yeah. Okay, so those are AP2 and those are instant. Uh, those are murderous strikes. So, so two, four up and vulnerable saves. And he gets cut in half. In turn five of the Raven Guards movement phase, we break for the exit. The tactical squad that were hiding behind the Rhino and the tactical squad that were inside the immobilized Rhino have ran round this one. Along with Korax, the Mordathan, the Bikers, my Praetor, the last remaining Terminator, trying to break on through and get out of this kill box. We've radioed over the top to tell the sniper team, uh, the what, last I say sniper team, the, the sniper. sniper. <laughs> this is Larkin here. He's still alive. And the last of the two autocannon teams to make a break for it. They're hoofing their way up that way. And providing fire support in the backfield is the Javelins and the Derradeo. And we worked out. I've got nine points of scoring stuff up here. Uh, yeah. And if all of your stuff lives, you'll have nine points of scoring stuff as well. I don't fancy Argotar's chances, but That's, we shall see. If you can get it all there, that means. Yeah. And also it doesn't go on to turn six. Yep. Yeah. This is going to be a big if. I'm going to shoot Argotar in the face. Yes, you are. Last cannons. Miss twice. And wound twice. Five up and bunts. Two. And then five up, feel no pains. Nope. One gets wounded twice. And then the Derodeo will fire everything at them. And I'm not doing the blast this time. Instead, straight shots with the Plasna Carrera. Strength seven, toughness five, wounds on twos, fours, breach. So that's a full armor save. Those are invulnerable saves. Yep. No. No, nope. feel no pain. <laughs> feel no pain. No. Nope. No, okay. And then the three, three. breaching shots. There yes. Are. Direct fire from the Derrideo doesn't get hot. It's like if you overcook it, you can get to strength eight, right? Okay. Which can double which out. Then doubling out. Otherwise, yeah. you just yeah, you don't sure. bother. A loss missile launcher hits twice. Strength six, wounds once at AP three. Five up and vulnerable save, and a five up for no pain. Interesting, because he's not fearless, and the A loss missile launcher pins. Oh. And if you get pinned, you don't count as scoring. Pinned and falling back well, units oh, no, do not we, score. Yes, yeah, so I won't be rally, I'd be rallying in my turn, wouldn't I? I'm what did you get? Six. He's okay. <laughs> that was game changing. That was. Uh, heavy bolter, kachunk, kachunk, kachunk. These need fours to wound. I get two more wounds into Argotar's, and he makes both of the saves, and he's standing there with two of his heroes left or bad guys left. That is the end of Raven Guard turn five. Let's go on to Word Bearers turn five. Here we are at the end of the Word Bearers movement phase. They show their hand. Their army is all along here. And that's nine points in my zone, nine points in your zone. No one will win the Shatter Strike. We'll have to go and have a look at who killed more because both of our warlords are still kicking around. And, until I shoot you with my Warp Fire Plasma Dragon. Yes, <laughs> unless. The warp fire plasma dreadnought firing in at this unit here yep. kills them. That's the, that's and the, then it'll be nine points to seven. But it could go on to turn six and you've exposed you yourself stuff out, yeah. to all of this. <laughs> so close. Can the blast hit the tactical squad? Ballistic so skill five, that's yep. a direct hit. Second shot. They're obviously shrouding, by the way. And that's a direct that's hit it. as well because you're minus five off the scatter. Yep. So that is six hits, which... Wound on twos. Oh! There's four ones. I love these dice. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a th two up save. Oh no, it's a sergeant. Three up save on a normal guy. And a six up cover save for intervening. I made the cover save, look. And then shrouding. I failed the shrouding. 
And that's it for your shooting phase. Well, he's got his missiles, but they're not particularly great. Oh, yeah, you've got the missiles coming in. The Havoc Launcher. Havoc Launcher. Uh, that's going to hit all three as well and wound them on threes. And you wound three times. So three up saves. I'm good. You're fine. The thing is, though, that is 25% casualties. Is it pinning as well, though? Uh, no, no, not Havoc. Not. Uh, if I break, yeah. it's seven points to nine. Leadership base. Come on, double six. And the Raven Guard break. At this point in the Battle of the Bloody Hills, the word bearers are winning nine points to seven. We counted up killing more stuff. I've killed more stuff. It's nine points to eight. They are still winning. As Corex yells back over his shoulder, regroup, <laughs> regroup, stand you fools. <laughs> and if it goes to turn six, hopefully they will regroup and I will annihilate some of these. But it's reinforcements coming in for the word bearers. Are the world eaters just on the heels? Are the sons of Horus round the corner? On a four up, it goes on to the next <sighs> turn. You know, I can roll ones and twos for days. On a one, two, three, <laughs> you win. Watch this be the only six I roll all game. There you go. It's a six. <laughs> we go on to turn six. Right, first up, need to regroup these guys. At least I regroup Re these guys. Regroup there. Um... I didn't do it, will not die on my Primark one more time. Oh, yeah. He gets a wound back. So in turn six, the tactical team regroup. The heavy guys continue to hoof it up this side of the table. They can't run. They're hoofing slowly. And Korax has had enough of that dreadnought. This is uh, an 11-inch charge. So, uh, so it's a 12-inch charge. So it's between 11 and 12, but he gets plus three to the charge. So a nine-inch charge to deal with that dreadnought. Otherwise, next turn, which reacted, by the way, which took some steps back, you're going to fire down here and remove more scoring stuff, which is exactly what I'm going to try and do to you yep. with the speeders and the Derradeo down here. So the four speeders are going to fire in at that squad there. Yep. And if I kill them, that's one point lost. Yep. Are you shrouding? Are you waiting for the Derradeo? Let's this. Last cannons. Two of them hit. One of them wounds. Six up save. There's intervening models. And a five up shroud. And they hold. Okay. okay. So the Derradeo will shoot in at that squad because yep. you've already shrouded. Yep. Um, I lost missile launcher. Hits all the times. Wounds on twos. They all wound. And they're all six up saves because it's AP3. And before I have to fire anything else in, yeah. that squad gets nuked. That's the end of my shooting phase. We're back to eight points to nine points. And over here, Korax needs to make a charge. Overwatch. You're going to overwatch. Can I overwatch twice? <laughs> it's a nine inch charge. He fails the charge. Then we did the overwatch with the Havoc launch and with it basically two breaching hits came through. Two four plus invulnerable saves and I'm fine. fine. Korax has surged a little way out of position though. The Dreadnought still has line of fire down into this, well, murder fest of Raven Guard down all here. The, all the Raven Guard. As they continue to try and break out of this kill box. In the movement phase, here's the word bearers trying to get over to the next battle grid to the wounded and the dying, eight points of scoring stuff. Here is the Dreadnought firing down into my stuff, wants to kill this, yep. that's worth two points, it's a scoring unit, and that'll make it back to eight points to seven, plus I've got one point for killing more, it'll be a draw. draw. <laughs> kill them, it's, <laughs> a draw. it's a draw. Don't kill them, it'll be a win for the Raven Guard. Can you hit? I'm shrouding the crap out of this. <laughs> Double shroud. Double shroud. That one misses. Well, it's going to go three inches. Three. We'll measure up. Yep, that's a miss. Next shot. Um, that's going to hit. Yeah. That's going to hit even if it scatters. Yeah. It's a hit. So that's two hits, which wound on twos and breach on fours. Okay. <sighs> um, the breach. Well, the breach is the breach. So it's a six up cover and a five up shroud. So one's, so one's dead. dead. So Which leaves the sergeant three with a two-up oh, two save. save. And he's good. Havoc launcher. 
this would have happened at the same yes. time and that yes. hits and these were wounded threes and they yes. both wound and so they have to go on the sarge who makes his makes save saves. but you killed one that's 25 percent casualty basically oh, i'd forgotten about breaking again <laughs> i've won by a point yeah if i roll nine or higher on two dice and fail leadership you win. Oh, it's a draw. Draw. Okay? Yeah. And this is Horus Heresy. How many times does it come down to the last We might as well have done this at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Eight or less to hold. Don't break again. Do not break. And he doesn't oh, break. Right. And oh, it is a lie. victory for the Raven Guard. Nice, man. Good game. So it's estimated that over half a million legionaries died in the drop site massacre of Is Isfan 5. And Corex led his Raven Guard out of them and did hit and run fights and, and continued to fight across the battlefield of Isfan 5 for three months. And in the Battle of the Bloody Hills, the word bearers thought they had him cold. But in the end, it is a victory for the Raven Guard. But it's only by one point. At what cost? I mean, I've got very little left. I've got very little left. <laughs> You've slaughtered almost all my army, but Corax did Corax things and slaughtered most of your army as well. They'll be free to attack the injured and wounded on one side, but I've still got some fighting uh, units here, some snipers, some bikes, and my chaplain still alive, and they can regroup half a click away with another squad over the horizon. What an absolutely brutal game. Oh, savage. Um, I, to be honest, I thought we'd like turn one was just, oh God, everything's dead. Everything's dead, mate. You killed all my shiny new toys on, like, turn one. I killed the Kratos and the Maragall, Maragall Dreadnought. Maragall, yeah. Who, Kid, the Maragall that I painted yesterday to thanks. bring. <laughs> Eight wounds. Initiative five, six attack Dreadnought has to die. Yeah, it does. How many of them have you got? I'm going to get some more. Don't get any more. That's fine. How many well, can I bring? tell the people how many Galvor back you've got. Well, at the moment, I've got ten, but I've got twenty more. Right. Waiting to so 30. 30, 30 Galvor back. <laughs> 30 Galvor back, 6 Mara Gold Can they, Do they come in talons? Uh, I don't think they do. They come in bites. <laughs> Nobody likes them, not even the word bearers. They no. don't even like them. They have to stay away. We'll have to do a battle at some point in the future with 30 Galvor back running around all over the place. I just don't know what I'll put up against it. Maybe custodies are probably the only thing that could withstand that kind of reckless hate. Yeah, Maybe. I, think, I was going to say the... Um, the world eaters could do alright but it's the higher initiative it's like the higher initiative first, yeah. you, you'll chuck 13, 15 rampages in and they'll just all die I mean they only do AP3 attacks but on 6 they render them murderous yeah. so that's so quite not nasty as good as the rampages, but, but the toughness 5 to 3 wounds, three wounds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. only get the 5 up and vulnerable save and score if Argortal is with them yeah uh, if he's not with them, then they're elites, I think. Yes. But there is a right of war where you can take them as troops instead of elites. I don't know if they score then. I don't think they, they don't. Get, they don't, they don't score. Line, you just yeah. take. Yeah, yeah, there's many rights of wars where you can take stuff as troops, but it doesn't mean it scores. Yes, line, yeah. What those rights of war do is it frees up. Say it's normally an elite slot, it frees up more elite, elite choices slots, yeah, or stuff that you can do. Da, da, da. Yeah, it's like the white. The one that I lean on all the time as an example is the white scars. They've got lots of rules that allow you to take all the fast stuff as troops. Yeah. That just means that you open up, like, you can always bring triple Zyphon interceptors and yeah. your bikes and your javelers. And stuff, yeah. you, can, you can do stuff like that. So rights of wars are basically ways of monkeying around with a force organization shot slot to bring the army that you that want to now. bring. Yeah. Uh, this is our first pass with word bearers. You're going to be coming back. Oh, definitely. Um, next time we'll show the escalation with demons in and stuff. Um, I know you've got Carbander. I have got Cabanda and I've got Samus. I think Samus had come the first time. Yeah. And then Cabanda. And I mean, so basically, because I've already got loads and loads of the demons. Yes. They're just getting repainted into my heresy demon scheme right. and rebased. So right. like, I don't actually have to buy anything. I just have to paint the models I have. Nice. And I'll be away. Nice. Um, I didn't want to face Carbanda the first time. And you said, well, it's this fan five. How many? You, yeah. I, I, you were hesitant about bringing the Galvor back, but they're definitely yeah. in it. Um, the First Heretic, great book by ADB. Yeah. He's got a, the end of that book, that cut of Isman 5. Korax and Kurz go toe to toe. There's a great it's bit great. in that book. Yeah, the whole bit. Of it. I like all, I'm, I, they're all great books, aren't they? There's not many that you like, well, that one was rubbish. Well, There's ones that you may not like either who's in it or you may not like bits of the story, but I think all of it, they're all really well done. I hear you, sir, and raise you the damnation of Pythos. 
Which one's that? Or the Battle for the Abyss, the Furious Abyss. The Furious, yeah. I don't know, but I still, yeah. But either Actually, one, the Furious Abyss no, isn't that bad. I was going to say, and I, I think... It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> I think even the ones that don't make sense, though, they, they're... They fit well within what it is. Some of them tell stories about things you don't care about, which makes right. it harder for it to be something you want. Yeah, it's like a, quite a few people like the Slaves to Darkness book. Mm. It's got quite a bit of Pert Rabo and Fulgrim going at it, but I thought that one kind of sucked like because that. I'm not it's, a Chaos fan. Loads, loads I'm not people, a Chaos fan. Loads of the people I watch don't like any of the Dark Angel stuff. They hate all the stuff with the lion and going on about night you see, orders and minute in the, the lion stuff. Angels of Caliban, their little trilogy. I mean, it starts in the forest and it ends when they just become space. Marine, so you've got a whole book which isn't 40k yeah and the first time i read them i was like yeah this kind of this is a nah. bit but when you read them the second time the third time what the, the dark it, angels have got the most fleshed out chapter in all of the legions yeah. the most fleshed out legion they've got the most backstory the most history and it really helps their narrative i find any of the ones i wasn't keen on yeah when i finished all of it and yeah. I'm into listening to the Siege of Terror stuff and then you go back yeah. they make loads more sense even yeah. the stuff you hated and we're yeah. like eh, that was a bit rubbish I didn't like. and you listen to it again you're like alright I can see why you were telling me that I see yeah I mean, what is it? Descent of Angels, the first uh, Dark Angels book, has got Sahariel in it. And why yeah. would you not want to read? He's in the Solar War. Yeah. He's up there with Corswain like doing it. things. Yeah. Uh, no spoilers or anything, but that's the other thing about the heresy is all the characters that we know, the Khans, the Luciuses, the Fabiuses, that we know they're alive towards the end, so they come out more yeah. towards the end. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> The Definitely. other great names that we learned at the beginning, well, there's Half a reason the why they're not <laughs> we don't around know about at the end. Those. There's a reason we've not heard of them in 40k. Yeah. yeah. And we haven't heard of Loken in 40k. I wonder what happens to oh, him. Oh, don't say that. I wonder that. what happens to oh, him. Oh, man. I wonder what happens to him. Anyway, that was a, a glorious fight. Don't forget to check out marginwar.co.uk for all your hobby and painting needs and bases and conversion and things like that. He's a lovely fella. He's very gentle. Soft hands. Anyway, thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming. <laughs>